Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode number 85 of the Terminus Podcast for the weeks of September 23rd, 2017. Wee! I am 21 Wee. years old. I am your host, Ellis, otherwise known as Train Man. And Star with me, drinking. my engineers are Wival, Jader, and Milky. No, thank you, Rule G. Stop drinking. Uh, and... This week we're flying guestless because we're doing it at a reasonable time and all of the scrubs are doing homework. Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Including some of us, actually. But... <laughs> <laughs> you might just have to read stuff. Yeah, I might, not, I might not be one for a lot of conversation, like, during specific portions. <laughs> uh, it depends okay. if you bring up Como or not, basically. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, basically. Anyways. Oh, no, how? Speaking of disasters, before we get to the mantle responsibility, CSX. the train will terminate at this station. This week we were in Stalingrad. Boy, the abandon. Welcome. You know, you know what would have been great if you just called me, like on my phone, because it's that sitting right here. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. I wonder what the copyright is on that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think anybody's gonna hold a copyright claim for the Soviet national anthem. I don't know. Probably. I bet you Putin. Putin would. Happy except, birthday. except he would. It wouldn't show up as a claim on your video. You'd get a knock on the door. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. That's the Italians, not the Russians. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, My anyways. two Russian gangsters, Igor and Igor. <laughs> Igor, Igor. <laughs> oh, that was Jader. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, the class on mantle responsibility has no change this week, but we do have three accidents in total from two different railroads. Canadian Pacific had two on the same day. It's a bad day. (laughs) Canadian Pacific had a derailment in in (gasps) Blucher, Saskatchewan. Oh, that guy's dead. Oh, Uh, I gotta add it. What? Saskatoon. Oh, oh, Saskatchewan. Saskatoon. Or Saskatoon, the other one. Oh, yeah, I see that. Saskatchewan. Derail southeast of Saskatoon. (laughs) Uh... It caused about 35 train cars carrying potash to derail southeast of Saskatoon. I, it's another good one. Yeah, first of all, what is... is it, first of all, I don't know how to pronounce that for real. It it's, pronounce either pot- it. it's either potash or potash. Yeah. I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard it either way. <laughs> it's potash. No, it's it was pot. a shipment directly from Colorado. Uh, Rocky Mountain to High. To Canada. But they derailed about hey. 35 cars of it. Ooh. So, uh, they just sort of made a big pile of covered hoppers. And the second one is... Is His Canadian Pacific train derailment in... <laughs> Let me see. Oh, no, nope, sorry. It's... It's the same one. It's just written differently. It, it God damn writes... It. It writes 40 cars instead of 35, so I thought it was a different accident. Anyways, oh. so we okay. have two accidents from two different railroads. The other one coming from BNSF, and this is uh, something we don't get to report BN. on too often, because BNSF crashed a train into another train. Oof. So, Bell County, Texas, a grain train was hit in the back <laughs> by, uh... Oof. Oh, no. Uh, wait, who hit what? If it was a head-on, then they hit. No, it was. It was not a. It was not a head-on. Oh. Uh, yeah, no. The grain train was struck in the rear oh. by a it's goods train. train. Yeah, and it derailed a whopping one car. Wow. So it would. It would have been otherwise completely not noteworthy, like not noteworthy enough to get a place on the podcast, but it was a train-on-train collision. So. Hot train on train action. Yeah, yeah train. Yes. <laughs> gone wrong, gone wild, gone sexual. Yeah. I've uh, clicked me. The NSF gone sexual. Now watch this merger. 
Yeah, Anyways. It, it's just a photo. Sad fight. Now it is me. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, to move uh, on yeah. now, let's move on to Trackside Tales here. <laughs> I've got some things that sort of consumed me today, but uh, I'll let somebody else go first while I get All the right. cargo document together. I, I got quite a bit of stuff done. I, uh, I, I played around with an MSTS to 3DS converter, which is a file type for 3D modeling. For the 3DS. And I, I had some very uh, interesting results out of it. So we have a sweeper at the museum that we're restoring that has a new cross beam on a complete side note, but I bring it up. So here's. Uh, I'm grabbing a picture right now, but <laughs> there's the picture of the MSTS model <laughs> of the sweeper. It's not too bad. Let me see. It's a web it. Yeah. I'm, I'm just bringing it up for the audience. Well, it's it's a web. Tall. It's a representation. Yeah. Why is it so tall? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's I understand it. Really like tall you push. Too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah, it's sweepers under it. Uh huh. It's like you don't don't want dust and crap getting too. get a lift kit on that thing. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, haul about thirteen <laughs> hours <clears throat> of work. This happened. <laughs> I need to flip it upside down. You, uh. Oh, what? Right side up. No, it's a new mon. No, it's a new system of monorail. <laughs> monorail. How did you realize that it was stuck underneath the track? Did you just put it down and we're like, huh? That yep. looks like the bottom of it. Yep. <laughs> See, now and you just I like need to string a cost. wire along the along the ground. Yeah. yeah. It uses underground wires. Yeah. It, it's the newest technology. Mm -hmm. It's great. It wanted to be it, it always it grew up wanting to be a cable car. Yeah. I guess. It told me I could be anything I wanted. So also, oh, yeah. is there an MST model of the uh or MST? Is there an MSTS model of the Commodore Vanderbilt? Uh, probably. Oh god. Yeah, probably. Probably. Get that and give it the same treatment into trains because then we can have a right side up bathtub. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then we could have just a bath. It's just called a bath. It's just a bath. It's not the or it's the inverto inverto bath. <laughs> yeah. Inverto square out. bath. I don't know. Look, does it cancel out or does it distribute? Math. Inverto, inverto, bath in parentheses goes to inverto squared. Why would you do in chemistry, not algebra? It's inverto squared, inverto bath. Yeah, but that's not how inverto works. Inverto would imply a negation, as if, you know, an inversion. You know, if, you invert, if, if you invert something twice, it's right side up. Yes. Right. So it would just be a bath. Which I'm just saying, inverto squared inverto bath then must be another way to say right side up bath. I guess. <laughs> X squared equals zero. I also did. I also found the or Mason found the program actually that allows for conversion of .im files back into the source files. So I started playing around, and everyone can guess the first thing I did with it. Oh God. I can't. Oh wait! Uh, wait a minute. Go. You ruined the malaise. Wait, what? You made it a uh, ghost. God damn it! <laughs> I need to fix the textures, but other than that, it works. No, it's, it's it is it's correct. It's a ghost because you killed it. Milky's yeah. Guatemala. Oh, I'm the ghost of good engines. Yeah. Keep like the picture with two. Uh, like f Are the these... 440 and the yeah the two four 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 Yep. Are uh, these visions of what will be, or what could be, or things that may be <laughs> only? But no, it will be fixed. So. <laughs> yeah. So I put the tanks from back my on. It. May no. <laughs> but anyways, I also fixed. Uh, actually, fixed. Uh, but I think it's Ben Neal's uh, mogul in American. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which are super nice. cute. 
Oh yeah. And I have a video on my YouTube channel like I have a link to right plug. here about I, I started up a series about me fixing old stuff for Tain. <laughs> First thing I did with the RGS K27 wasn't too hard. This was a bit harder. <laughs> but other than that, it, it's all good. <laughs> it is good. And I got all the SD9s working. <laughs> you should try to figure out how to keep the, uh, the 2882 and the I like any from exploding when you... Yeah. Yeah, when I go to upload them on the DOS. Yeah. Wait, what does the Allegheny yeah. do? It explodes. Uh... Okay. Well, what happens is it's too low of a version number to be uploaded. Uh, okay. Uh, so then you have to upgrade it, and then Tane doesn't... It doesn't agree with you. Upgrade! Speaking <laughs> of which, speaking of, uh... Tolbrent, I guess. Oh, right. And Mason being the MVP in finding things. Uh, he has been the most in tune with what's been going on with my Tolbrent spreadsheet. And today it grew like four more pages. Because I Ooh. realized I'm going to have to rework a lot of the way I'm doing supply and demand calculations and uh, and sort of measures of how many carloads are going in to what places, which carloads are going to what places, which cars are going to what places, because only certain cars can carry certain uh, resources, because trains. Uh, and basically, uh, as, as well as that, I found a new command that I like, that was on the DLS, and it is the load specified asset command. So you can make a train load an asset based on the queue and the number in the queue. So you know how when you open a boxcar or something, like say one of the JR yeah. boxcars, you can see a whole bunch of the uh, you can see a whole bunch of possible assets, mm -hmm. or you know a whole bunch of possible loads, and they're in a bunch of categories. And so it asks you basically for the category and then the load, given a number. So starting with zero, zero, being the first one in the first queue. And so you pick one, and it'll go through all the cars in the train, and it'll do that one. So if, if the first thing in the first queue is coal, for that car, it'll load coal. But the next car down the line, it might be a box car, and the first thing in the queue is, like, general goods. So it'll load general goods into that box car. So it's a little bit limited still. But it's a lot easier than having multiple industries load specific things into specific cars. So my, my train stacker became a lot easier to make. Uh, and I need to go and make the second iteration of that. But I got sidetracked while I was working on that, playing around with the industry links. And... They're fun, ain't they? They're really fun, and I'm asking Tane to do some really ridiculous things. Jesus Christ. So, like, asking... So, I have a mill on the olive branch. It produces... It takes in coal to run itself. It takes logs out of the river, so you don't need to give it logs. And then it produces wood chips and lumber. Simple, right? As long as it has coal, it can pull logs out of the river and make wood chips and lumber. Makes sense, right? I wanted to set it up so that if you gave it coal and gave it extra logs, which you wouldn't be giving it otherwise, it would produce more stuff. Oh, wait. So, I'm back in Wayward Tycoon. Yeah. That was a lot more difficult than I expected. That just sounds complicated. <laughs> like, uh, how do you get a trains industry to work faster? I don't understand. The thing is, what... Well, I went through a bunch of iterations. The thing I found was, if I create an industry, just a random one that's sitting there, not attached to track, and say, every... Uh, every second, say every second, or every five seconds, consume a ton of coal and produce a ton of wood chips and a ton of lumber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's simple enough. And you can use industry links to have the coal get put into a different industry and have the wood go to one industry and the wood chips go to another industry for outputting into the, into the train cars, which is exactly what I did. But... Because you can you can ask for more than one in 
more than one uh, uh, commodity to be consumed when you're producing something, and you have to have both of them. You have to have all of them, I should say. So if you have an industry that consumes three things and outputs something else, you have to have all three of those things in the industry, or else it won't produce anything. It won't consume anything. It won't produce anything. It won't run. So I said, okay, instead of just requiring coal, it requires coal and logs. So every five seconds, it'll consume a ton of coal and a ton of logs and output a ton of wood chips and a ton of lumber. Okay, where is it going to get the logs from? Well, we'll have another multiple industry not connected to anything that's producing logs at a rate of one ton every ten seconds, and an industry link connecting that to the main industry. So the main industry is receiving all the coal, and it's receiving logs once every ten seconds but it tries to produce once every five seconds, so half the time it won't be able to produce. But if I set up another multiple industry that's connected to track that also unloads logs from the train and puts it into the main industry, then you can have an overflow of logs and then you can produce once every five seconds, so it'll run twice as fast as if you just didn't give it any logs. And that was my final thing, and that actually works. And I abused Tain at this point. Alright. Uh, Just blew my mind, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to execute it next time I go back to play around with Tolbrand, because I started doing the minor, like, final adjustments to what's going on in all of, uh, and that's why my spreadsheets are getting more detailed, because I'm trying to decide which, uh, which freight cars I can use for which commodities to get them in and out. Uh, it's and deciding, okay, how many trains are going to come through here in a day? How, how long are those trains going to be? What else are they going to be carrying? Where are they going? Where are they coming from? Which railroads are running them? Where do all the other cars on the train go? Which are questions I can't really answer yet. But it's I'm trying to set up the framework for that. Yeah. The good news with that is, Olive is almost done. Olive means ATLSing and interlocking towers, and I think that's it. How do you do the interlocking towers? I'm not really sure. I know Mason knows. I'm going to get Mason. him on the show to explain it to me. Yeah, I need to yeah. do that for uh, Yankton. Yeah, it's going to be real fun. Yeah, it but, sounds yeah, my, amazing. My spreadsheet grows. My spreadsheet keeps getting bigger. Where do you think you're going to build to next? Uh, I'm going to build down the Gilson Eastern Main Line, so down the coast. So it's going to not exact. It's going to not be strenuous in terms of landscaping. No. And there's a there's a intermediate stop about fifteen or ten or fifteen miles away, which will be called Mason Valley Junction, and that's an homage to Mason because he's the real MVP, and to Mason <laughs> Valley, which was a town on Geiger Mountains. Uh, oh, wait. And it's going to have a small branch line from there that goes a couple miles to a town that's going to be based off of Salesville, Rhode Island. There's going to be a big bleachery there, and so there's going to be a place to drop off the sheep, a place to drop off some chemicals, uh, like to drop off cloth and stuff as well, and to offload, uh, to onload to onto the train textiles and goods uh, and sheep to take back to the farm. So it's it's going to be a whole thing. I'm, I'm planning this. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to put there, and then I was like, oh, I can do a bleachery. That'd be really cool. Hmm. I didn't even think of doing that for anything. Yeah, yeah. But the only reason I thought of it is uh, Salesville, Rhode Island, is at the end of what was one of the shortest independent railroads in America, at barely a mile long, I think. Oh Jesus! Called the Mashasic Valley Railroad. We've got a half mile. Yeah, you guys. We well, yeah, you, you guys have a half mile. You're anywhere, also a museum. Though. Well. Yeah, but you don't want to have a half mile. Or a mile and a half. Knots is, I think, a thir three quarters of a mile? Yeah. Hmm. They don't go anywhere, though. Yeah, yeah they this, do. This connects the they go around in circles and circles. That stuff counts as going somewhere. It doesn't <laughs> count as going anywhere. Your displacement is zero. <laughs> no, it depends where you stop. If you stop halfway around the circle, then your displacement is a quarter if mile. If you stop halfway around the circle, it's probably because you broke down. Probably, but that's the material. <laughs> Anyways, 
I am excited to return to my spreadsheet ventures this evening. Yeah. I've never I'd never thought I'd be so excited over a spreadsheet. God I'm a nerd. Anyways. Is that what kids call these you know, days? I, I yeah. had the same feeling except for replace spreadsheet with Google Doc. <laughs> That's a Google Doc. Be because I've been uh because I've been writing ten sixty sevens dimensions down on a Google Doc. <laughs> so that Just way a I random can start, document? Yeah. So that way I can start making all this stuff that needs to be made. Oh, in for in real life? Yeah, in real life. Oh, okay, that's 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 cool then. That's some serious stuff. I thought you were talking about in trains model. Oh no, no, that's, no, no, that's no, cool no. then. No, uh, just y'all got most of the dimensions written down. Handful that I need to do. Got mm -hmm. facts that were needed, like what like what word it was made up. <laughs> And I have all the steps that we need from cleaning it out to moving it out of the car barn under, under its own power. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Nice. I, I got big plans. <laughs> and I don't have a timeline for it. Or <laughs> real bugs it, but... <laughs> Soon, TM. Yeah. Event, Before event I die, TM. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's. I mean, you're doing something. That's you yeah. Know, that's damn good. You'll you'll get it done sooner or later. Yeah. Sort of like a uh, coach, like a certain coach, by the name of uh, you went to fifty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Weibold, how th how are things going with fifty? I heard that they're stalled. <laughs> <laughs> they're stalled. Wait, what do you mean? Hey. Not have, I not talked about, have I not talked about that on the podcast? No. Uh, I you've talked about it, I think, but not really on the podcast because it's like. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> well, for anybody who is, I'm really excited about attending Polar Express this year at the uh, museum. We will not be using you win a fifty as our first class car. We'll be using B8 again. Uh. I didn't know that. Freaking how was. How was Chris not on my Steam friends list? For this long. He just chum. friended me. Yeah, chum. 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 Unfriendly chum. Uh, anyways. What's this uh, building locomotives on a budget thing you've got? That's a discussion topic for a time when I'm preferably not doing a lab report. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, okay. I wasn't it, sure. It's... I wasn't sure what it was. We have to have a discussion on discussion topics, which news is kind of light this week, so we might touch on that later. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, Jader. Yes. What have you been doing? I saw you posted new pictures of your layout, and it was nice and green. Yeah. I uh, let me find the pictures on my phone here. I uh, finally fit. Well. Yeah, I finally finished, or at least good enough for now, finished the uh, mountain that's sort of in the uh, like middle back, I guess, of the uh, big 8x8 square in my layout. I need to visit you just to see your layout. Yeah, uh, and, and I have to, like... And also to get you to ask your date out. Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, anyway, um... Uh, t t t yeah, I. Ah, here we yeah, go. the, the uh, hundred trees that I got for like ten bucks. About pretty much every single tree on this mountain didn't have a stump to it. <laughs> yeah, but then I'm looking through my uh, my drawers and stuff, and I found I found these tiny, maybe one and a half inch nails. They're all rusty. I'm pretty sure I have tetanus or something from it. That oh, that's always you, that fun. That would only happen if you stabbed yourself with them. I know, yeah. I didn't. <laughs> um, but I decided to glue the nails to the trees and just use those, and it worked pretty well. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. it looks good. Thanks. Oh, yeah. I need to get more trees. Good, good job, uh, dogs and stumps. <laughs> yeah, I need to get more trees now. Um... And then oh, also, no. uh, well, during the during the last podcast, my termination was that I bought some 
SP Alcos. Nice. Well, they're fu- they finally got here on uh, like what? Right? No, uh, Thursday last week. They're oh, wait. they're really nice, except for if I'm going to DCC them. I did some research, which I did this before I bought them. That I need to uh, isolate the motor. Because if the engine derails and you have a decoder in there and the wheels touch the frame, Ooh. there's a chance that it'll blow up the decoder. Oh. Oh. Kapuya. Yeah. And I'm not entirely frame? sure how to... What? They're open frame? No. Like, I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Next, I'll take one of them apart and show you. That's like Something. a problem that you see a lot of the time with brass engines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm about to just put, like, electrical tape or something on the bottom of the frame, so if the wheels do touch it, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Isolating isolating the motor completely is obviously the best way to go, but that gets complicated quickly if you do it. Yeah, I was trying to, like, I found a few web articles about it, and it's like, you gotta run this way. I'm like, what? No. (laughs) No. Yeah. Way too complicated for me. I can barely solder. Hey, uh, Wybold, I have some Pennsylvania special related unfortunate news straight from Chris. Oh, no. What do you mean? Uh, huh? do you remember the, do you remember the dartboards that were at the station in Pioli? Yeah. They are now no longer in service. The signal, oh, really? bridge, has been, the signal bridge has been relocated, and they are now color position lights instead of regular position lights. Oh. Well, we saw them. We saw them in their last couple months of operation, then, as actual position lights. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we get to see them. That was pretty cool. That was cool. So, yeah, this um, you just posted this picture of this Amtrak bulletin, uh, near Washington Supplemental Bulletin. Peoria interlocking signal 12L, located on the Valley Road overhead bridge that governs westbound movement on number four track, has been located 90 feet west of its previous location and has been converted from a position light signal to a color position light signal. 90 so, whole feet, wow. Yeah. Well, it's like... So young. it's like far enough It's far enough that you could barely see it from the station. Yeah, it's, it's far enough that it's that you can see it under the bridge, basically. It's not like right on the other side of the bridge. Yeah. Safety starts with me. Well, and it's because they, they were doing all the track work on that area, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the center track completely out. Still marked like Which, that on this side. Looks like they're still working on it. Hopefully, that you know helps them with some serious issues out there. <laughs> you know, anything to aid the fight in curing trains to Thorndale. God damn it! <laughs> okay. So, anyways. Oh crap! We forgot about the locomotive versus thing. We've got to pick what we're gonna do. I was gonna what? ask if we have anything else before it, but then. Um, uh, Fox Lake area, I've been planting trees, and I finally figured out the five meter grid. Trees! Oh, five meter grid! Yay. <laughs> so, uh. Yeah, hold on, I'm writing down a potential title. I'm close to buying, uh, new speakers for my. Uh, oh, the K4 Amlet Berkshire. Yay. Finally, uh. Finally fixed that. Oh wait, man! I got yeah. something. I, I got good pictures. What do you get good pictures of? Uh, my uh, P and W GP forty nine and Gary's mod. Hmm. I own oh, yeah, the passenger cars that I made. Orange plague. <laughs> what are she 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 Looks pretty nice. I don't have a picture of it handy, but I made a uh, Penzi SD thirty five. Mine, Gary's mod. Yeah. Rechive. Standard. Hmm. Standard bullshit of the world. Orange. Uh, <laughs> yeah, orange plague. Yeah. Anyways. I, I could go on and on about the, the lengths that I'm <laughs> abusing Tane, but... Yeah. <laughs> I, I put equally as much abuse on content matches. <laughs> Yeah, at least you do get to some end. Uh, yeah. Um, see, locomotive.com. I'm finding some things here. So, what do we want to do for uh, locomotive? 
Okay, uh... uh if we've got nothing else to talk about. We could do... I don't know. I just put this one in here, and I'm trying to find links for it. Lynn vs. Sandy. Uh... Oh, which nah. I found it before, and it seemed alright. I'm not even gonna bother suggesting one, because I usually do terrible suggestions. <laughs> I mean, you uh, can try, we can see. Yeah, we we can try and go up against one of my terrible suggestions. Uh, okay, where is it? Where is it? Uh, Steamlocomotive.com. Yeah. Okay. Only the most professional banter here. I, I, I gotta yep. make a comeback with this Bailer. engine. Although, although, I mean, you can tell fairness, us all about your is, chemistry work. Um, I, th I thought you said not to mention that because it was giving you a headache. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, I, I've PTSD. already got it, so I might as well. Yeah. To help with this assignment, refer to the method writing slides in the method sample writing piece before its beginning. For clarity, your method section should have at least two subsections that explain how the pipette bulb was calibrated and how the rocket bulb was made. Method section up. Ten points of grading on the following. Stop. <laughs> just, just stop. I'm getting PTSD, and I haven't even. <laughs> you have, even how does anything. that work? I don't, don't know. Go to engineering PTSD. school, kids. Don't go to engineering school. Yeah, because then you might take our jobs. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I mean, I want to go to Michigan Tech or just anywhere for civil engineering. Civvies. Wait, do you have to do math? Yes. yes. Wow. Oh, <laughs> what uh, a question. Stupid no, you question. don't have to. All Crap, right. I lost the, the thing of where this was. There it is. Hmm. There it is. I, I could not figure out... For whatever reason, every time I look at the Steam Locomotive page for something that's in Britain or England or anywhere around that, I can never find it because it's under Great Britain. Yeah. British. And I never think that it's going to be under Great Britain. Expect it to be under Meh Britain. And we'll meh. talk about why that is later. It's alright, Britain. It's okay. Shrimp it's Britain. Like, so I would do I would do this one the Lind vs. Sandy. I'd also do the Deca Deca Pod Pod versus the Virginian <laughs> engine. Sure, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, I'll defend okay. the Virginian. I'll, I'll defend the Deca Deca Pod Pod. Oh wait, all right, the guys, go, yeah, go get oh, go wait, fix your links. Oh wait, Pod Pod machine broke. <laughs> yeah, no, um, go get go your get links. Wait. All right, is, so that means it's time is for this other. What? We're not. Bible. What? Yep. Hey, Wobble, what was it time for? Uh, adventure time? Just kidding. Oh. <laughs> oh. Did you know, an updated link to it. Okay, did you update it? Yep. Okay, good. Oh, wait, I don't okay. need to click on this. Let me try to find I don't think it. there's going to be any confusion here. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. Is it the first class of Deca Deca Pod Pod, or the second? Wait, there's two of them? No. Yeah. There's not. There's That's only the ten thing. of them. There is oh, wait, one. one. <laughs> That's not... Okay. Alright, here's Also, the, wait, uh... why does this have a white highlight? There's the Virginian thing. Who did this? No highlight on the back. Huh? Wait, is there a picture of this the... thing? YouTube video of the Deca Deca Bod Bod? What? Oh, it's this... No, there can't be a there can't be a YouTube video of it. Oh, no. it's this. Oh. Wait a minute. Boy. Wait, there was more than one of these. What of the uh, of the Deca Deca Pod Pod? Yeah. Yes. Wait. Is this? Yep. Yep. There's ten of the Virginian things. Lord. I haven't seen I, I either. I, I. Holy. What? Can we please see? Um. Oh wait, is this the updated link? Yeah. No, it's not. No, the one I just. No, no, no. Can you? Can you? Oh, the one up okay, here. Okay, hold on. I'll, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Okay. Uh, oh, it's in the where, where, uh, Skype. Yeah, it's in. It's in the chat. All right, fixed. Okay, so. Photos. Oh, God. Yeah, can we please have pictures of these two disasters? Okay. <laughs> it's actually a pretty decent picture. Yay! Oh my God, the only the, thing. only the one side though. Okay, wait. I I gotta get a good picture of it, but. 
I like the trailing wheel on the Virginian thing, just, I know. just based on how unnecessary it Why looks. Why is it there? It doesn't, does it do anything? It's not a tumor. I can't it imagine drags. it does anything. Look at it. Well, the it... firebox is supported by the three rear driving axles. I know. Okay, here's... Virginian, the... why is it there? Also, I can confirm that that video is of the Deca Deca Pod Pod running. Right, Wait, there's seriously? A of it. There's a video of it? There's it's a model. Be a model of it. It's there's like a, be a few model seconds in this video that has it. But, but is it a model? Or the real no. Model? What? One oh, to no. one scale. Please. Please. Oh news. my god, you're uh, kidding me. Well, I'll link no. this down oh, below. Yeah, I'm no, not going to no, play no, it for, for fear of a, a copyright strike, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there it is. Oh <laughs> my god, that's Wait it. The camera? Yep. Holy shit. You can't tell. It's it. Look at the tender. Oh. Well, I mean, <laughs> lots of Santa Fe nonsense. I know, but, but like... Oh, it's, yeah, it's... as it goes around the corner, you can really tell. Oh, I, okay, I didn't watch that far ahead. Uh, viewers, watch this video. It's called The Hazards of Hell in Episode 3. This is, uh, how long in? Like a minute and a half in? Yeah. I like how it's a, <laughs> I like how it's a 2 10, 10 2 pulling like a dozen cars. <laughs> Great job. At least it's not the bendy boiler. Next week on Locomotive First. Wait, isn't that what that is, though? No, the bendy is boiler's it? a different thing. I okay. Say, I thought, I thought, I thought that was the same thing. Next week on Locomotive versus Bendy Boiler vs. I don't know. Deck Deck Pod Pod. Is there another Bendy ben Boiler? <laughs> is there another Bendy Boiler? Um, Wait, no, the most flexible of locomotives versus the most rigid of locomotives. <laughs> no, wait, no. Calls two Ellis. No, wait, no. Two <laughs> Deck Deck Pod Pods versus Bendy Boiler. <laughs> versus five Vulcans. <laughs> yep. Versus five Vulcans. The three way. Wait, no, that's like Whoa. a seven. That's hey a eight, eight, six way. Well. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> okay. That's hot. Uh, well. well, well, well the roll well. dudes. Oh. Well, no. Why would you even suggest I would suggest feel like, like, let me smash. Let me smash. Becky, let Becky, me smash. Please. Please. Yep. Smash. Anyways. Let me smash. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Yeah. So it's time for a look at what we're... Let me see, can I... Okay, so we've got a picture of one. This is, oh my god, this awful thing. Uh, and then the picture of the other one, which is not the one I remember because I thought it was Bendy Boiler, but it's not. Uh, Santa Fe demonstration train. You don't really see much of it. It's surrounded by... By foamers. scrubs. Yeah, by foamers. Scrubs. I, I can get you a few other pictures. But uh, if you can get us one that's, that looks at it a little bit Wait, more the, clearly, oh that'd my be good. God. Wait, the Santa the Fe is thing is a stupid rollback tender. No. Yes. No, whalebacks are bad. <laughs> What's They're the purpose so of what? <laughs> the, more, the more I look at this Virginian engine, the more I'm just seeing very strange choices. Wait a minute. I'm confused. No, that, that is the it bendy boiler. Matter. That is the bendy boiler. Is, is it? it? Yes. Wait a minute. Look at it. Uh, it's got the pipes that connect the two. Yeah, but it's. Oh. Look at the boiler, it's not bendy. Okay, maybe I'm misremembering. What, 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 Did, was, the, what was the bendy boiler then? I don't know. I want to say it was a 210. Ten, I thought I it was the bendy boiler too, but. It. I feel like it was a 2 I thought this was the bendy boiler too, but I looked at the picture of it and it's like, wait, it doesn't have the little bendy straw section. It's got a band covering where it would be, which did they have a band that's, that covered that's true. it? No, hang on. Hold on, let me. No, let's do no, some I found the bendy boiler. It's a different thing, and it's uglier. There's uh, no way. Please let me see. <laughs> please here's, post. Uh, please post it. ATSF flexible boiler. Nope, you're right. It is uglier. It yeah, was a two six six two. Here's the bendy oh, boiler. What? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's worse. It it's looks so like worse. a bad Photoshop. <laughs> it's so much worse. Andrew will say it's fake. <laughs> It was like oh with the deck of deck so of hot being dry. The bendy straw <laughs> section. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much worse. <laughs> oh, it's...
Why did they uh, build that? I don't understand. Anyways, don't anyways, we'll, we'll anyways. We'll laugh at that another time. Anyways. And yeah, anyways. So, <laughs> who was going to go versus... first? The Virginian disaster or the ATSF disaster? Uh, I don't know. Oh god, I think I think the ATSF disaster deserves to go first because I think oh, okay. it's gonna get creamed. Uh, yeah, it looks smaller. <laughs> it looks older. It's not yeah. about the size. It's about it how you. Looks dumber, actually. Right. <laughs> oh crap! All right, go ahead, guys. Go ahead, Jader. All right. Oh, wait, no, oh, wait, sorry, what? sorry. No, Bendy Boiler goes first. Uh, not Bendy Boiler goes first. Cafe, right, thanks. Go, go ahead, Milky. <laughs> Alright, let's go, Milky. Okay, what's your local base ID? <laughs> <laughs> Way to start! <laughs> okay. Uh, 417. 418, damn it! <laughs> are you? Are you? <laughs> yes. 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 Oh, damn it. Way to be those okay. guys, Virginian. Yes. Okay, Virginian, carry on. <laughs> Um, alright. Uh, mm, how many were built? Uh, ten. Okay, and he draw gives ten. it back. Oh my goodness. We already <laughs> covered this at the beginning. I know, like, I don't know, it's like, why would you ask that? I don't remember, we shut both, up. You both said how many were in your class. Alright, alright. Okay, No uh, points, but Milky has it again. Oh wait, uh, uh, uh. <coughs> Ooh. Ooh. uh what is your your minimum weight of whale? Oh no. Um minimum weight of whale. Hundred and three pounds. Ninety two. Oh man. Oh, my god. Okay, that's one for Milky. Okay, how about your weight on tri Um, 617,000 pounds, even. 550,000. Oh, even. shit. But well, you're smaller. Engine weight. No. With all those yeah. wheels. 684,000. <laughs> 616... Thousand even. <laughs> okay, what's your tender yogurt weight? <laughs> you might actually lose this one. Uh, twenty, two hundred thirty-one thousand. Two hundred sixty-six thousand. Oh 20. yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah, you did lose. I mean, look at the tender on it. You have your stupid it's whale back. Small, small, small. Yeah, small no, but I thought small might. No, better, I have but... a smaller and better tender. Cause well, well I don't know about better, smaller. You have smaller, tiny but, lighter. Tiny but mighty, question mark? Yep. Um, let's see here. What's your tractive effort? 109,113 pounds. Mm. Okay. 135,170 pounds. Oh, Wait, who won that? Me. Okay. By like 20,000 pounds or something. I think. Okay. okay. Um. God, it's bad. <laughs> which one? Yes. <laughs> um. Okay. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll, I'll die. No. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'll probably die. <laughs> don't want to do that. Actually, wait. Um, Why is the firebox? Wait, what? what? How much water can you carry? Uh, I'm not going to do fuel because I'm pretty sure you have oil. Uh, 13,000 gallons. Damn it, 13,000 gallons. <laughs> ah, alright, no. he has it again. It's 3 to 3. Okay. Well, I ain't even it. cool. So. It's 3 to 3, and as I would expect with these engines, we're getting nowhere fast. <laughs> what? what was your question about the firebox? Why is the firebox on the Santa Fe thing like ribbed for her pleasure? I don't know. You just you answered your own question. It's ribbed for her pleasure. Yes. Okay. I should okay. just asked why it's ribbed. Uh, I don't know. Santa Fe. Uh, yeah. 
They're crazy, man. The thing I'm learning uh, from this is Santa Fe cannot design anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't like. It's like they design a lot that. of really good stuff, and then, you know, they just let the one. Yeah. You know, they go violate rule G, and then come back with this. I like how the forward set of pistons is counterbalanced, and the rear set is not. Wait a minute. On which one? On the Santa Fe engine. Wait. Oh, look at I the see. Forward, look at the forward set of pistons. It's got oh, the giant yeah. rod <laughs> sticking out the front of it, so it's counterbalanced. Uh, Dude, I closed oh, down. Oh, wait, no, wait. Uh, well, there's a dude standing in front of the back of the second set. Or the, a dude standing you in front would, of the front. Yeah, but you'd be able to see it. Uh, like, yeah, it sticks yeah. out. It sticks out a decent ways. It stick. It would stick out past where he's standing. Why is your Why is your fat tube been heating? Okay. These. Um. Four point five six. Ouch. Oof. <laughs> Wait. Why would you ask that question? You get something worse. Factor heating. Wait a minute. What's yours? Five. Point oh four. I thought it was going to be worse because you had. You had <laughs> God! <laughs> oh Why my would God. you ever ask factor adhesion if you had more than five? I don't know. I think that's the worst factor adhesion we've ever had on the podcast. No, 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 no. it's definitely not. It Has is definitely been not. Like six? First. Yeah, we've had like 5.5 something, I think, at least. Jeez. And I think it was the Mega Pacific. <laughs> oh. Slip, 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 slip. Uh. Okay. No, I I was going off of the fact that I thought that he had it worse. Okay, what's your driver <laughs> diameter? Okay, that's driver your... diameter uh, Small. fifty-seven. Damn it! What? Fifty-six. <laughs> <laughs> Way below, yeah, guys. Really. Yeah. <laughs> the two no. roads on opposite sides of the country built mistakes at the same time that are exactly the same. Wait, we don't know if it's at the same time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh... Uh... Yeah. Where were you built? <laughs> wait, 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 you can't ask that, Shader. I'm, I'm provoking him. <laughs> That's not how it's I'm prompting him there. Hey, Shader, what's your total engine and tender? No, no. Yes. <laughs> 915,000 pounds. What was that? 915,000 pounds. Yes. That's... Eight hundred eighty-two thousand four hundred and fifty. Still fat, but not as thick. Yes. <laughs> not as thick, thick with ten C's. <laughs> All right. With ten that C's picks me and up. a rib Why? boiler. Uh. Oh, Follow-up question that is no bearing on the the thing that we're doing. Hmm. If the Santa Fe found it necessary to articulate the boiler of a 2662, why did they think they would be, you know, why was it okay to get away with a 21010-2 with a rigid boiler? I don't know. What was the point of articulating a smaller locomotive? Well, my question is, what are the pipes, like, running from the back half to the front? What do they do? They're delivery pipes. pipes. Yeah. So, is it a bendy boiler? It's just concealed no. better? I don't understand. No. I don't know, it's Santa Fe. <laughs> they they, they take Santa all Fe, your railroad like, resources and suck them up. <laughs> knowing Santa Fe, it's like, it's actually two separate boilers that they put together. It yeah. was. Yeah. Wait, really? Yeah. They built yeah, these they, out. <laughs> they built these out Santa Fe locomotives. They were like, two ten twos. Santa Fe, Santa Fe. <laughs> two, two ten two. Two, okay, so they just two glued two ten two. They glued two two ten twos together. Got yeah. it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's called the Santa Fe tongue twister. Mm. So hang on, Santa okay. Fe times Santa Fe <laughs> times Santa Fe equals Santa Fe. Santa Fe. Santa Fe, Santa Fe, Santa Fe tongue twister. All right. Like anyways, hey, it sounds like either a drink or Sorry. a sex move. <laughs> Both. Uh, anyways. You who drink who, it is, and who it is up right now? I am. Milky. Milky. Ask some questions. Okay. Uh, why is your... Your... Uh, 
overall wheelbase. Okay. Um, 97. 108 points. Yes. <laughs> I'm 11 feet shorter than you. God. Okay, look at the two engines. You actually I have a trailing it. truck that exists, and he doesn't. <laughs> And I have smaller wheels. I have, I have a question. What? I don't know what the official stat is, but it's the uh, the ratio of the driving wheelbase to the overall wheelbase. Yeah, that's a that's a thing. I just ratio don't know what it's officially called. That's it. Yeah. yeah what's your got... what's your ratio of uh, driver wheelbase to overall wheelbase? S zero point seven five. Zero point three one. Which one's better? Wait, Wait, what? what? I don't no, know. no, 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 no. Zero point three one. No, no, no. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Wait. Yeah. I don't Wait. Know. Seven uh, five. I'll buy, even though it's kind of low for an engine like Wait, this. I'll buy. Seven five. You know what? Three one is probably just counting the one set of drivers. I'm confused. Which one's better? So it's I mean, six larger two. would be better. But, well, no, but 6-2 doesn't count the space in between the two sets of drivers, which the other one probably does. But if one, if one, if one, one set staff. of... Yeah, yeah I, I did. I think this one is inconclusive, because there are too yeah. many variables here that we don't know. Okay, yeah. Like I hate, to, I hate to throw it out the window, but... Throw it out the not, window. We'll say, it's not how, a about good how about this, how about this, how about this? Now that I'm looking at him, I didn't actually you know, think to ask this before asking it, it's probably the Virginian engine, just because of how much more is, like, I'm there is no existing track. trailing truck, the tender is shorter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And by the looks of it, the pistons are smaller. So I'd wager that the Virginian has a higher ratio. Yeah. I, okay. I, can, I can second to giving it to the Virginian engine, just, just oh, well, on, on merit of sight. Like, it looks yeah. like that is correct. Alright, anyways, uh, Milky, you're still up though, aren't you? Uh, or did Jader win something? No, I won asked? that. Jader just okay. won that. No, 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 not that. Like something that Milky asked. Oh, I uh, mean Jader asked it. So yeah, yeah, the wheel, the ratio. Yeah, that was me. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. When were you built? Uh. Night. Nineteen. I have been. 1918. 1911. Oh, yeah, like I was so rude. And I didn't really get the be board. over the stupidness by that. The, the Virginian does not look like 1918. It looks like 1920 something. Yeah. Like it looks yeah. way newer. I don't know. It looks it looks USRA. Which, yeah. I guess. Which 1918? Yeah, it looks it looks like it's patterned off of USRA. Yeah. Which actually, uh, those are USRA trucks under the tender. So. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so who we built can blame you? them for this. Usra. Well, no, you can blame them for the 2882 that looked a lot like it. <laughs> Milky, who built you? Uh. Uh. <laughs> Santa Fe. Uh, Alco. Alco? Yeah. Alco I don't know wins if I that. trust Alco more than. <laughs> Yay, Alco. Alco wins. <laughs> One of the few times where Alco takes it. Yeah, I have your alcos. No, but you yeah, can have my Santa Fe. <laughs> you can have can your I Santa Fe's and I smash them Fe's? together into one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Santa squared plus two Santa Fe plus Fe squared. No, I'll just take a hacksaw and cut them in half and get two engines out of it. The other one's a two, be, a catalyst two ten o and an o ten two without a pilot. It's a new concept to be in it. <laughs> it's a B unit. <laughs> of course it is. I want to try the that. first B units in 1918. <laughs> or 1911. 1911. Oh my god. Alright, anyways, uh, Jader, continue. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not going to ask those. I will probably die. It's 8 to 5. Rip. What's your firebox area? Oh, here we go. My, my firebox area is 284.50. Jesus, it's small. Uh, 516. Small. I mean, Jesus. look at that firebox. I know. Jesus. I mean, my, it, my it's where we store people. the bath jack and hookers. Not much room for them there. Like, maybe one hooker. Yeah. 
Jeez, what kind of hookers are you going out with? Yeah. Thick. Yeah, it's thick. Jader. It's Ted C's. Wait a minute. Thick and me. What? No, it's I'm not Jader. In there. Okay. <laughs> now, if you were in there, you'd get suffocated to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those dinosaur pills. You throw them in, add water, and they. <laughs> <laughs> And then the dinosaur feels this almost smothered you in my. <laughs> okay, um. Great area. 81.90. Wow. Uh, 108.8. I was stuffed up through my nose so I couldn't breathe, and I was drinking root beer, so I was drowning in root beer. <laughs> Stop drinking. <laughs> okay, uh, evaporative heating surface. Uh. 3,920. 8,000... 8,600... Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah evaporative heating surface. Yours is 8,000 and this is 3,000? Yes. How the... I don't even know. Okay. Yours is chum. <laughs> um, evaporative heating surface. Yeah. You know what? I'll bet you the... I'll bet you the... ATSF thing loses out a lot because it's two boilers that are not yeah. connected. Yeah, if you look at it, because the tubes will end there and then begin there again. The other one is 1911. It might just have like, it might just have tubes, whereas the Virginian engine would have tubes and flues, which, question, are either of you superheated? Uh, uh yeah. Yes. Oh, cool. So never mind then, they both have flues. What's your superheating surface? 2,380. What? Huh. Fake news. Wait, what? <laughs> 2,120. What? Uh, Fake news. <laughs> okay, well, I'm getting Fake out of there. News. Uh, Fake news. Uh, what else can I get into? Uh, By the way, guys, we declared war today. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do we always do engine wheelbase? Yes. Are you sure? Engine wheelbase, not not driver? Pretty sure, yeah. Because yeah, Jader won by like 11 feet. Oh. Uh, Wobber Day Messina's power da, 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 da. <laughs> Jader, you move. The late great legendary Robert Lynn Messina. Yeah. Jader. You move. Where'd he go? He's dead. Jader is kill. Jader is chum. Jader, wake up. The dispeller of paint shades, Robert Lynn Messina. Alright, well, if he's gone, I guess I could take over Jader's for him for a little while. Oh. Jader's dead. Hey, hey, Milky. I'm dead. What? I'm Ready? Dead. Jader, come back. <laughs> this shouldn't be how it works. Because no. it's not Milky's. It's not. <laughs> this is like the opposite of a punishment to Jader for disappearing. Mm. Jader's already winning. Also, Milky has the ball. Also, I'm looking at the Virginian engine, and it really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what did you expect? They both I expected suck. an engine that had a, sta a sand dome larger than the cab seat. <laughs> Jeez. It's one of those engines that, like, look at it. I know, I've, I've been looking at it. Sorry, I'm here. Ah, uh, Jade is back. All right, Robert, let me take power computation. Good. Come on. Okay, uh, 23,392. Oof. 18,428. Suck yep, it. that went about as well as I thought. Give me suck. Shuck it. <laughs> Give me suck. Give oh, we all suck. Suck, suck with oh. 10 C's. Suck. <laughs> that just needs to be the name of the podcast. <laughs> suck. <laughs> just suck. No, it's Chum with 10 C's. <laughs> chum. Chum. Combo Breaker. 
All right, Mr. Combo Breaker, lay down some combos. Yeah. Okay, uh, same as above plus superheater percentage. Yeah, that's a combo. <laughs> this is actually a combo. 25,430. 28,070. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Close. Okay, yeah, well, that, same that as above. Super but... didn't save you. Okay, same as above, but substitute firebox area for great area. 88,337. 133,128. Wow. It's Small big. firebox. Uh, power L1. 13,619. What? Yes. Power, um, uh, 9,062. Yes. What? I don't understand. Yes. I mean, it's still 7 to 14. Yeah. Milky, the thing that I expected to happen is happening. <laughs> Else predicted it. Soiled it. Soiled it. Soiled it. Uh, power MT, I guess. Okay, power MT. 323.80. 545.90. Oh, dear. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Make a comeback. 8 to 14. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Alright. Uh, what... What happened? I asked. I want to. <laughs> uh. Do, 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 do. Hey, Is this a spiller? I have a what? question. Do you guys do you guys both have high and low pressure cylinders? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. How uh. big are how big are your high pressure cylinders? Uh, mine are 30 inches by 32 inches. Mine are 28 by 32. Ah, uh, I'm bigger. How big are your pressure cylinders? Uh, I'm 48 inches. That's huge. By 32 inches. I'm 38 by 32. Milky, okay, do you I... have high pressure and low pressure? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I do. I thought I was going to get destroyed there for some reason, huh. but... Yeah. Well, that, that lends itself to a style point. Four man. feet in diameter. Holy <laughs> <God>. huge! <laughs> it's almost as big as the wheel. <laughs> it's bigger than our wheels. You're an arrow gauge. Well, still, you're chum. <laughs> yeah. Well, they you're both chum. they both had high and low pressure cylinders. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, that's um, that's interesting yeah. because just a side note. So. Well, actually, I guess we can save it till style points then. Yeah. Oh, right. I like retirement. I mean, I think we wait, wait, wait. Jader, when were you retired? Uh, let's see. They performed well for thirty years: nineteen eighteen, nineteen twenty-eight, nineteen thirty-eight, nineteen forty-eight. Son of a. <laughs> you really thought that thing lasted yeah. longer? Wait, yeah, <laughs> seriously. We know really? these things were disasters already. Uh. The Virginian at least had use for a large, cumbersome, lumbering, useless uh, paperweight. The oh well, the the sign was unsuccessful, and the locomotives were converted back to Santa Fe locomotives in 1915 through 18. <laughs> they lasted and then four the, years, <laughs> and then those went on how long? <laughs> that that doesn't count. <laughs> I don't know. They parked. Uh, they wait until 1950. No, no. no. <laughs> okay. This isn't Degario. <laughs> I'll fight for that style point. This is Degario. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. style are we points. Ready? Are we ready for style points? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, All right. so. Style points. The note I was going to make on the Santa Fe thing is that looking at the picture. You can see that the Virginian thing is a true melee. It's got the you know low pressure cylinders on the rear set and the high pressure on the forward set, or sorry, other way around. Yeah, other the way Santa around. Fe. Yeah, other way around. The low pressures are up front, the high pressures in the rear. Anyway, the Santa Fe engines they appear to just have high pressure cylinders on the outside. So if they do in fact have low pressure cylinders that are you know standard, you know they're sort of configured in the standard way, then it'd be a compound melee. 
Mm. Mm. Oh, because yeah. is it just me or do the pistons look on the outside? They look about the same size. I mean, again, there's a dude standing in front of one of them. Yeah. I I we we have. I don't know the <laughs> the ones at the front definitely look larger. I yeah, think they because they, they sag lower to the ground. Yeah, I'm looking at a different picture now, and it looks. Eh. Can you send the looks, other? It picture? looks less conclusive from this angle. Anyway, um, that does nothing to save the fact from the the fact that the Santa Fe engines have stupid tenders. Yep. Okay, Stop well, point for the N and W for having a normal tender. Actually, not even a normal tender, a wagon top tender. Yay! I don't like either. Tiny ass cold. I don't like either of them. Why don't you like the wagon top? <laughs> because it's too short. It's not okay. coast to coast. Well, at right. least it's a, at least it's a normal <laughs> style of tender. Yeah. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Wait, how much coal is in this grumble, thing? Grumble. There is something stupid with the Virginian engine, though, besides the trailing truck, which I think uh, that's... Are we going to point out that only the Santa Fe thing has sand, basically? Yeah. Um, no, yeah, I, I was also going to point out the fact that on the note of sand, the Virginian thing has not a head-end throttle, but an external throttle linkage, and the throttle linkage goes through the sand dome. <laughs> oh, wait, Ooh. what? It does... It wait goes a through the sand dome. Look... Look what? at it. It's got, it's got the fulcrum it. just aft of it, and then goes through the sand dome what? to the valve and the steam dome for, like, no apparent Why? reason. If what? you're not going to do a head-end throttle, there's really not a reason to have it on the outside. Ay. Damn it, Virginia. All right, well, the, okay. the Santa Fe gets a style point for not having a stupid style throttle. Style point, Mike. And for having sand. I have yeah. sand. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you... Listen, if you have a sandbox of sand, the ATSF thing has a beach of sand. Yeah. I have two giant... Oh, wait. No. Yep. He's bigger. Okay. Yep, big. Check I it see. out. Can, can I get a style point for having a somewhat normal trailing truck? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, can I say... I say can I point out that... Uh, well, does the ATSF thing have way more air, or is it just me? Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. It also know. has more air compression. Because if the uh, Virginian thing is I'll in fact maybe the USRA standards, side. which 1918 I would I would suspect mm -hmm. it only has one cross compound air compressor. All right, hang on, um, Virginian. Well, it's 13 to 17. Let me see if there's the picture of the other side. The Santa Fe thing has an amphitheater on the front of it. Yep. Oh what? <laughs> oh, there's a cool picture. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Wait a minute. You could I, have I mean, a performing but... band on the head end of the Santa Fe thing. Yep. Oh, that's also, good. also, oh, it has large. Um, they're not washout plugs because they're not plugs. They're like washout hatches on the side because to wash the entire giant barrel, or both of them, I suppose. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have uh, two cross compounds. Oh, you have two. Do you? Yep. Okay. Did you find a picture on the other side? There's a model, but it's uh, close. Uh, that works. Can, can I get a style point for we were used on the Deming Scraveson train and had a big event for it? Oh, wait a minute. Like, I, like I technically band. have four sand domes. Yeah, you're like an yeah, F81. Yeah, four tiny sand domes. Yeah, but it's <laughs> like one F81. Okay. I don't know, I, I guess you get a point for that. Um, I, I don't suppose either of them have trains models. Uh, actually, 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 I mean, actually, the Santa Fe one does. Yeah. Are you serious? It's yeah. Paul's trains. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Okay. I just found a picture of it. Well, listen, Ew. I'll give you one point combined for that and the demonstration run <laughs> okay. because it's Paul's okay. trains. That's fair. <laughs> Ow. Uh, but Jado, you just found a model of yours. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a brass model. Oh okay, never mind. Uh, and I think there's a. Yeah, there's like a Lionel model of... Uh, yeah, it's one of the... Where's the bell? Ones. Yeah. <laughs> I like how that's a question. Where's the bell? Where's the bell? Ding. Where is the bell? What the bell? What? Is it right there in front On of the your first engine. sand dome? Yeah. Is it right it's like, in front it, It's like in between the two domes on the front. Where? Oh. What? Okay, yeah, oh. I see it. Ding. I see it. Yes. Um... Also, I like oh, yeah, how the dynamo is just kind of there. Also, why is the tender backwards in this picture? Yep. Probably a model. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. Also, we're gonna, if we're going to talk about the amphitheater on the front, look how much room the Virginian thing has on its pilot. Yeah. <laughs> Although it is a massive jump between the running boards yeah. and the pilot itself. Find the gap. Yeah, you have to cross the gap over the crosshead and combination levers. Me too. The cafe thing where you just... Where it's this, like, staircase with handrails. Yeah. And it looks like you should have a band on the front end of it. Yeah. <laughs> they should have done that for the for the demonstration they runs. They should have. Did they? Missed opportunity. Um... Okay. Is there another picture of the Santa Fe? I, I made the engine news door opened. On Wait, yeah. To go out to the catwalk. Do I have a door? Yeah, you guys. De you guys. He definitely has a door. I don't think you have a door, Jader. Oh my God. Oh. What? Jader, I'm not even sure if you have a window. <laughs> it's tiny. Do I have a window? <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes, you do. It's a little itty bitty one. It's, it's right very above tiny the starting window, valve. But it's a window. Um. So huh. apparently okay. Lionel also made the Santa Fe thing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> Can I see a picture of this, please? Of the Lionel one? Yes. Two. Sure. Three. Bit. There you go. Oh, God. Oh, it's a legacy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and I got a 404 error. Looks like oh, you're wait, going the wrong wait, way. I know why. There. I messed up. Go back to homepage. Oh, God. Okay, there. Oh, oh my so God. Bad. Yeah. That was hot. Like, it doesn't look that bad. Yeah, I was, uh, no. it still looks really bad, but it looks incredibly stupid. Yeah, <laughs> the box is long enough that they can spell out Santa Fe two ten ten two three thousand class steam locomotive <laughs> in giant block letters. They can yeah, spell it out That's in letters crazy. as tall as the engine. Damn. Oh my wow. god! All right, well. Anything else? Uh, uh, what's the score? It's sixteen seventeen. <laughs> uh, um, I don't, I don't know. know if I don't know if you're gonna give it a Penzi point, but the Santa Fe thing had portholes. Yep. No. Where? No. On the cab. No. No, it didn't. It portholes? Oh. No. Yes. No, those are not port. It's all uh, illusion. Yep, they're portholes. Additionally, maybe maybe we can combine for the half point to tie things up and wrap it up. The Virginian thing, I've been trying to figure out how this works since we started. Look at the reverse linkage. Wait a minute. And Wait, where is it attached? Yeah, well, not even oh. that. But look Wait. at the reverse linkage, and then look how it goes out, reaches across the rear set of cylinders, goes back in, flips upside down, crosses up the forward set of drivers, Whoa. goes back out into an upside-down inversion, then into the radius rod. What? And you still can't tell where it joins into the cab. That's confused. Yeah. It's incredibly confused. And as somebody, you know, if it doesn't have a power reverse, and even if it does at that, that makes it incredibly difficult to actuate and incredibly difficult to oil, which is oh, no yeah. bueno. Is there a power reverse? 1918, I wouldn't imagine. Wait a minute, what's that? I don't know. Uh... Or a close-up picture. I don't. I don't know what's going on with this engine. I. All right. Fine. Yeah. Sure. It's seventeen. 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 Okay. 17. okay. I'll, I'll throw my hat out of the ring then. Yeah. I'm good to let these two suck and suffer together. <laughs> what? Suck. Suck with ten C's. Suck. What? What? Would, would being we built into another locomotive count as a style point? No. no. Because you were you taken were apart from another you were locomotive. <laughs> I was you rebuilt from too. another locomotive and then oh, rebuilt back into it. Yeah, and then rebuilt back into Fuck it because back. you were a disaster. Well, it's better than me scrapped. <laughs> this is not I don't know. news. I need. Is it okay? Uh, is it okay if I type something in the guest list? No. If you need okay, to well, address, then. if you need to address something, address somebody directly and not in the guest How list. How do we? How do we address new rules? Uh, why? Uh, new rule. Any news posted, please make sure that it's relevant and new. That's, that's... Because this, this is one that we run into every now and again, where we'll get an article that's a few years old, like this one that just got posted was the 31st of March of 2016. Oof. Yeah, we haven't talked about it. 
But I've seen heard the brain. Looks like there's also development on it, but still, Wait, I know that's it? that's just that's one that we run into every now and again. And we meant yeah. to do something about it. I mean, it, it'd be it'd be nice to, but. It's right. it's so few and far between that I think we can just deal with it when it comes up. Yeah. Okay. And it, yeah. Do we vote? Uh. Okay. Yeah. We can we can vote on these disasters, even though I'd like it to not be a tie. <laughs> okay. You don't want it to be a tie. Help me. Uh, I mean. Um. Why do you not want it to be a tie? I I want there to be a winner, but. Okay. Um, I don't have a whale back. Wait, no, we already did. Disaster. I have a bigger cab. Wait. No. Who has comfier seats? <laughs> yeah, wait. I, is it, I doubt either of them had train line steam, that's for sure. No, but is it... Okay. I don't know. This this can't count for a point, because it's just the horrible quality of the photograph that's making me question whether or not it's there. Look on the tender of the uh, Santa Fe monstrosity. Yeah. Is it just me or does it look like it has a second dynamo stack on the tender? I, what? I, but look look above the yeah. last zero on three thousand at the I, very I top. I see it. It looks like a dynamo uh, stack. I think it's a, a light. Yeah, yeah. it's no. gotta be. Yeah, that must be a light. But then where's the other one? Because it's Tender crash sites, anyone? I don't freaking know what's it going does, on with it. It does Wait, have does it have, a, does it have a rear light? It does have tender class lights, yes. Yep. No, just a rear light, like a back oh, yes, light. It, yes, yep. it had that too. Okay. It's lower down, though. Okay. Wait, where are the classification lights on the Virginian, then? Uh, I, I don't see any. Brackets I don't have class. <laughs> yeah, where even are your brackets? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have class brackets. <laughs> okay. Okay, oh. stop. <laughs> that style to get, point. They had to get class. glued on afterwards. I don't have class. I'm from I'm from Virginia. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. There go all the Virginia <laughs> listeners. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Right. Uh, so Bye. I'm having, having what? Bye, y'all. We now have what? The state of Wisconsin and... I don't know. Who uh, made fun of cheese lately? <laughs> I don't Anyways. Know. Cheese and is now no, it's okay, guys. I like the Packers. Uh, hey. And now I'm, they're back. I'm a Wisconsin uh, which, school state. You guys have uh, superior. Which, that catch by Brady, or that throw by Brady and that catch for the touchdown yesterday. The one at the end of the game? Yes. Wait, I thought, the, wait, I thought we were filming this on Saturday. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, we're predicting the future. Again. It was earlier today. Uh, or no, it was tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it was tomorrow. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Alright, let's let's... Let's finish this. Okay. So the Deca Deca Pod Pod wins votes with or with wins points with eighteen seventeen. By uh, something completely stupid. <laughs> stupid. Deca. Well, the whole thing was completely Deca stupid. Pod, pod. I mean, it was it was dumpster fire versus garbage pit. <laughs> a, a turd sandwich and a huge douche. Uh, okay, and now we'll take votes from the two people that are here. Uh, what you oh, vote? you were setting it up to be a full, full tie, weren't you? No, I didn't uh -huh. even realize. It was an inside job. <laughs> what are you going to vote for? Oh, uh, God. I'm, I'm going to have to vote for the Virginian thing because it doesn't because it wasn't a total disaster. Yay. Yeah, I'm going to vote for the Virginian thing too cuz I like uh, wagon top tenders. Yay. Yeah. I mean, admittedly, I think they look better than than uh yeah, the Santa Fe is just like back tenders. Back tenders. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well. That's not even that's a really little wagon top tender too. We had ones that were like proportional to the size of the engine. Yeah. Yeah, it's Someone, it's like they designed it, and they're like, oh, crap, we need a tender. Okay, what's in we the need a tender. Go get something out of the yard. Steal it off one of the switch engines. Mm -hmm. We'll follow the Grand's example. And oh, I mean, they, they certainly couldn't... Uh, they certainly couldn't have ended up with, uh, you know, a tender that was longer than the engine. They couldn't have ended up with Pensy Syndrome, that's for sure. I've, uh, standards. Standards? <laughs> Imagine a tender that long... Okay. Also, did anyone notice that the whaleback tender for the Santa Fe engine had three axle trucks? Yes. For some yeah. reason. 
Yeah, three axle cast trucks too. <laughs> like nice trucks. Yeah, it were it were basically passenger car trucks. Yep. Hi. So that's that's all. So that's so, that. Yeah. Let's move on to the news this week. And I'm the trying news. to find. I'm trying to find someone else to watch. Um, I have because. breaking news. What's your breaking news? As of like maybe five minutes ago. Faking uh, news. No, not faking news. Uh, National Railways of Gary's Mod is uh, closing. <gasps> yep. Wait, really? Yep. Yep. Just oh. posted. Uh, I got the little notification for it like maybe five minutes ago. All right. <laughs> Can you tell us why? A moment of silence for Nergum. And moving on. Yeah. Another moment of silence. That was like a microsecond. <laughs> Basically, uh, Energy M is. It's been neglected, and it's pretty much, you know, it's been neglected. Nobody's really caring for it anymore. It's pretty much just time to get... Yeah, it's pretty much just time to go. Scrubs. Yeah, it's pretty much just time to go. So, uh, it's been fun. Yarp. Well, I mean, I mainly go to Blue Mountain Southern now, but it was it was fun. Yep. Energy and heritage units? Yes. Ripping pastas. You know what else is ripping pastas, Chater? Well, no. Let's have a let's have a serious moment of silence okay. for this because this is something that yeah. yes, we absolutely needed to talk about, and it's you know this is a huge loss in the railroading community with no with no jokes attached. Yes. You know? yeah. uh, yes. I saw this and I'm like, what the hell? So. And in fairness, we knew it was coming. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Jader, go ahead. So, in short, uh, Jerry Joe Jacobson, founder of the Age of Steam Run House, rare tycoon, businessman, Flint. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Steam, steam engineer. Basically the... Philanthropist. The, yeah. Thank the, you. The F. Nelson the, Blount of our generation. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. Uh, has uh, passed away. It says somewhere in here. Or I, heard, I heard somewhere I think it was from like pancreatic cancer, I want to say. Yeah. And it was thank- it was some sort of cancer, if I recall. Yeah. Thankfully, and uh, perhaps, uh, you know, not most importantly overall, but most importantly to his railroading heritage, uh, or you know his his preservation efforts, I should say. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has left. I mean, there's 19 his, steam locomotives that yeah. probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. I actually, no, 20 if you count uh, 26 at Steamtown. Yeah, he has left his locomotives in the care of. Uh, his sons, sons mm-hmm. I believe, who do yeah. have it, yeah, who do have an his interest sons. in them, and they, you know, will carry on his legacy. I met one of the sons uh, when I was up there for a, for a tour last summer. Awesome dude. That's good to hear. Mm-hmm. Good. See, now I want to go. To, now I want to go to college near there so I can volunteer there, if they have a volunteer program. Do it. But, do it. Yeah, and uh, so. The Very, Steam Roundhouse will likely persevere. That was sort of his life's work, it seems yep. like, you know, because mm-hmm. it was this big thing. Yep. So I remember watching, like, documentaries, and he's like, you know, my life goal or my dream or something is to be able to have a place where I can, you know, pretty much, like, stress, well, no, have a place where I can, you know, work on loco- work on steam locomotives. And store them. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And then and probably he, and he had his bit. Yep. It's too bad he didn't have it for, you know, long enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But always gone too soon. Yeah. Yep. But seven sixty five put his name on their cab for a trip. Yeah. Aww. And uh, I saw TVRM put. Uh, they ran black flags on one of their engines to, uh, to, uh, like. To pay tribute. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So, there you go. Yep. Uh, a rare winning legend has passed. Mm-hmm. It's up to we're we're the, you know, after these uh, these sort of old timers, we're the next generation. So. Yeah. Yeah, and not to not to sound in bad taste or anything, but it's up to us to. Essentially, one up them and carry on. Yeah, we. Yeah, I know. 
Come on, Wybel, be the next uh, JJ. I know that doing my iPhone, I'm probably going to own the Steam of about <laughs> or two, or a dozen. <laughs> or 19. We need, to, we need to, I am become Gramlings, destroyer of, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I am Gramlings. Fixer of, fixer of Hanks. Can we make, like, the Iron Horseman locomotive works and seriously do this? I would, I would love Almost. to do that in, yeah. in the future, you know, when we get out of chemistry. So, and, speak out. Yeah, yeah, speak out. Chemistry is hell. Speak Anyways. of if you need me, shout. <laughs> Anyways, so to move on to some lighter stuff, and uh, to, as, uh, what the hell is that noise? Is everyone, is anyone else hearing that, or is that seriously just me? I don't I hear anything. Okay, you hear it, because Jader, it's your mic. What do you mean? It's freaking out. <laughs> Anyways. It's tripping balls, man. Metra, to praise our lord at 40pH, uh, who has, uh, who is persevering on Metra for 40 years now, uh, to mark 40 years of continuous passenger service wow. for the locomotive model, locomotive model uh, they have <laughs> unveiled a new wrap on Metra locomotive number 100, and it looks pretty cool. Hey. Um, so it re good. replicates the original color scheme that mm -hmm. was put on them back uh, in 1977. Wow! And Man. the last the last locomotives were delivered in eight, uh, 1989, and so they had a total of 118 F40s. Wow! I'm not sure how many of them still operate, but they use a lot of. Yeah, they, yeah. They're, a pretty, they, they're a pretty extensive commuter rail service. I think they have, uh, like, I know they have, like, the re the rebuilt ones, I think. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they uh, are. Rebuilt, they have chiway ipes. That's yeah. badass. Also, they were, they were overhauled by Progress Rail. Ah, oh, nice. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, some of them have, like, the weird sloby cab. Yeah, weird ones. Uh, quote, I like this, I like this quote from, uh, the from Metro's incoming CEO uh, slash executive director Jim Derwinski quote: "While it's good to recognize what the F40 PH has contributed to Metro's reliability over the years, it's also time to recognize that Metro is now providing the service with the equivalent of a classic car." Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, uh, I keep forgetting F40s are that they're, adult. they're like yeah. the 70s. Forty years later, I'm not charged with keeping these same units running for the f foreseeable future. It's pretty amazing when you think about how many miles of service these engines these engines have seen. Yep. So yeah, uh, damn son. Keep it going, Metro. I like how these yeah. these commuter services are just like that. Nah, F40s. We'll just we'll just keep we'll just keep using them. We'll we'll run them right into the ground. Yeah. Uh, it belongs in the museum. <laughs> I mean, Do I'm many museums have F40s yet? Uh, I think there's a handful. So. Are there? I wouldn't. I would not be surprised. I mean, I, I, just I, know, the, had, uh, I know there's a guy in Utah that owns one. Um, I know he just Steam had like two Canadian ones, but they're leased out now. I know somebody does. Somebody's got to have seen it before. Yeah, somebody has to. But like, um, like not majorly, I guess, like F units or something. No. All right, so we actually had a couple of other pieces of news from these kind of We're uh, like commuter rails and yeah. uh, and transit authorities. Now, uh, this I, I thought this was actually going to be a fairly uh, commuter heavy podcast, but uh, this Thank you seems to have disappeared. Where who, who ended up with them? I ended up with quite a bit of them. All right, go ahead. Take like the uh, Houston Dallas bullet train firms have been chosen. Oh yeah, that's an that's an old one. That's been hanging around for a while, but but it's ahead. still progress towards fast transit. <laughs> if anybody's gonna, if anyone's gonna use it, I think it's gonna be Texas. They, yeah. If anybody uses it, uh, you know, can use it so much but does not want it, it's Texas. But I think they got a, I think they got a company out of Italy doing it. Hey. Yeah. Sanili oh. Impregilo. Has built rail systems throughout Italy, Denmark, and the Middle East. So these guys are, they're, they, they they're know their stuff. World travelers for railroad building, or you know, Europe travelers at least. Yep. 
We know they're good at railroads anyways. But you know who isn't good at railroads? Scepter. <laughs> Made the world again. <laughs> Scepter Scepter's gonna be Scepter. Where did yeah. this, what what happened? Okay, so uh yeah 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 what happened? Yeah, there was Actually, a development. Well, you sort that out. Sorry, passengers around the train. Well, you figure that out. I want to talk real quick about bullet trains again. So, uh, India just got a $17 billion loan from Japan to build their first bullet train. Nice. Uh, between Ahmedabad City and Mumbai. So, two extremely major metropolitan areas in India now. It, India is an incredibly populous country, so uh, they can they can certainly use that. It's what I've heard about India is like think about how in the U.S. you have the urban center and then sort of you know decreasing yeah. density as you get farther out, and then you know you've got empty nowhere and like Nebraska and stuff like that. In yeah. India, it's like the city directly adjacent to empty nowhere. Like there aren't suburbs. It, you know they never got to that stage of development. Yeah, they they so. haven't found the cheeses of suburbia yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, India needs a Levitt town. <laughs> India, India, India's railway system carries more than twenty-two million passengers a day. Oh, so wow. that's uh, Jesus. the precedent for them to have some high, high-class trains is is there. You know, they they yeah. certainly would have the ridership. They can probably do whatever they want and get enough riders to pay the bills. So. Yeah. That that could be cool, and I like seeing the bullet trains pop up all over the world. These are the oh, next yeah. generation of major railroads. So, what did SEPTA do? You were saying? Okay. So if they came out of the tunnel, the Septa. car derailed. <laughs> That's it. It just popped off the track. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was about way to tip over and go onto the expressway. I've never been so scared and shaken up in my life. After walking to safety, uh, passengers were ushered into waiting shuttles, and then we wait for them to turn. Uh, they wait to turn off the power. Because SEPTA, I think, is food whale. Oh, great! Some of the stuff. Wait, did the passenger car like fall on the third rail? Uh, because if it no, did. Yeah, zap. Yeah, zap. Uh, I I think a lot of SEPTA is is uh, overhead. Wait, but I think yeah, most of it this, is. But this might not be. Or no, the tunnel is third rail. The uh, the subways. Or or maybe they messed up the wiring somewhere. Well, either way, you're not supposed to be wondering about when this power yeah. on. Uh, yeah. This power on. So, that's a. Uh, I mean, at least it wasn't anything major. If we recall last time, not oh. that they've killed anyone lately, but last time I I can recall that they had a, a very few people issue. Yeah. They crashed three trains into one another. So yeah, and that was pretty few people injured, but no one got killed. So yeah, probably not anything major. They don't exactly go that fast. No. Anyways, so that's Septa being Septa. Miami wants the right whale. <laughs> Miami's well, Miami not underwater Miami. anymore. But <laughs> this, uh, uh, you think the hurricane probably put a little bit of a uh, a, a chink in their plans? They they want the right whale because it's going to be much faster than the buses that they already have. Oh, okay, <laughs> so they're just trying to swap them out. Yeah, kind of like what Poitum did in the seventies, isn't it? It worked out well for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of transportation. Well, because, and I've talked about this before, there's the bus stigma. And once you get away from buses, once you get to something on rails, people <laughs> tend to ride it more. Yeah, you, There was an article about we, this last podcast. Yeah, we went from whales to buses, and now we're going back to whales. <laughs> the rails to buses because, because the Freedom. automobile rage and buses were... Uh, huge, yeah. Well, yeah, they were they were huge, and they were the fresh new thing, and as well, they were less expensive, and people were just driving their own cars. The the poor man's automobile. <laughs> right. you, you you weren't driving 
my 1906 Interurban and 30 miles every day with a bus. <laughs> what is it? But, uh, yeah, they just want a better transit system, and that's how they're going to do it. <laughs> I mean, Miami could probably use it. Miami gets a lot of tourism. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like me saying that is not exactly anybody breaking new ground, but just in general, it's... Yeah, they, uh... They, they could probably use more. And again... It, the the bus stigma is even worse with people who don't live there. Yeah. It's, it's seldom that you go to a new town. It's like, all right, let's take the bus to wherever. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I should be really planning it out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. That's the other thing, because you know where the tracks go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, I have to... Crap, it's about to roll over. I need to get my daily real quick. I don't do the start uh, of the podcast, but I've got to oh, answer wait, a uh, point. I, world fine. one, oh. you do actually get a point. I do get a point for that. It's like the first time in. I'm not gonna say it. No, <laughs> no, no. You get it too. <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> you thought it. I did it. No, I didn't. I won't you object to this. Sing it in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, for that, say, you're a bastard. New Mexico whale wonder is eyeing service trucks amid... New Mexico uh, needs to get it together. Well, the reason why they're doing that is they have to upgrade their stuff to federal snuff. <laughs> They've got to put positive train control on their thing, but... Weren't yeah. they there when... Weren't they there when they made these decisions on why? You, this It's it's phrased like, well, this is just... It's just blindsided us. It's like... There was an agreement it, made. Yeah, and but, it's pu- it's been public knowledge for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a there's a lack of forethought that goes on. Yeah. In the railroad? No. <laughs> uh, Speaking yeah. of a lack of forethought. What? Oh boy. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you get to talk again about my favorite people. As, and in fairness, they're not my least favorite people. They're not, his, they're not his least favorite people. They're not my least favorite people. I have some distinctive least favorite people. And they're not that, but they're not far. The um, Como people, have, they've just kind of grown to be referred to as... Um, yeah. They recently had a, an article run in Nine News, which was... Whoa. Ah, Papa Bad. Sorry. <laughs> it was suddenly very loud with somebody yelling about American Furniture Warehouse. <laughs> anyway, uh, they recently had a featurette on Nine News, which is the local television news station, uh, covering primarily the restoration of the depot and the track itself rather than Klondike Kate, but they do show some shots of Kate. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. I gained a little bit more respect for them through watching it and lost a little bit through watching it. Um, first, it's strange it's strange and I've, I'll be the first to say that it's not very professional of me to place stereotypes on people that I haven't met before and you know I've not seen in person. You know, it's kind of oddly dehumanizing if it's just this faceless sort of group like the Como people rather than actual names. And seeing some actual faces in this and hearing them talk a little bit about how yeah. they realize that they're not full-fledged railroaders and that's not their intention. It's Their intention is to preserve rather than to be you know, engineer Authentic. wannabes. Yeah. That being said, however, there are a good number of them that that's exactly what they aim to do is they're kind of railroad wannabes. Yeah. Not that not that we at the museum aren't railroad wannabes. I mean, we don't run a real railroad either. Oh, everyone at railroad <laughs> circle. Yeah, <laughs> circle. Yeah, circle. Circles. Last time I checked, those circles better than a straight line, and at least our turntable locks, and our engine has <laughs> cylinder cocks that work. Um, I know. I'm... And then as well, if you if you actually watch the video through, there was one thing that stuck out to me, and that's some of the video of them working on the track. Holy Moses. <laughs> Is that a good Holy Moses or a bad? Let me let me share my screen here in a second. As soon as the American Furniture ad is done playing, this is for uh, I, I, know, still. I, I tried to get gonna... a screen. 
I tried to get a screen cap of it earlier and I couldn't because I wanted to show it. Alright, well, I, I'll have to just direct the people to go and look at the video. Okay, I'll watch the video. And at, yeah, at about 45 seconds and then again uh, previous that at 40 seconds even. You can see the the level of the track. Yeah. Bad. Oh boy. <laughs> Learn to civil engineer. I, I mean, it'd be fun on a hand car. <laughs> yeah. Is this a roller coaster? Yes. That's almost as bad as our track. Hey yo! Speak, speak up narrow gauge railroads building stuff. Uh, That's the other one I've got to talk to you the, about. The museum complex that Oregon Electric Railway Museum is in is in the narrow gauge railroad. <laughs> Wait, what? what? Wait, where? What? Uh, at. <laughs> At Antique Power Land, okay. where the museum is, we're, we're getting the new Narrow Gig Railroad joining. Oh, us. fun. And I'm... Uh, I'm not quite sure. Right back. <laughs> like, they have all the on. ties right and all the whales on site right now. Do they have anything to run, though? Uh, they plan on buying something from... Something. I'll, I'll I mean, you could probably get like a quarter or something. Uh, what gauge is it? Three foot. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And it's um, a ten wheeler. Oh. From Mexico. <laughs> it, it's on this way in front of a mall. It's a ten wheeler. A wheeler? A wheeler? <laughs> Wheeler. Wheeler, I, I haven't talked to any of the people that are involved with it, so I don't know too much, but... Do you have a, you have a picture of it? Yeah. I want to see it. Is it cute? I want to see if it's cute. It's a three-foot gauge, ten-wheeler, so it's probably cute. <laughs> but then again, it's it's currently on display in Mexico, so it's probably also kind no. of scary. It's da, on da, 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 it's in front of the mall. This, this Wait, mall is about 10 miles south. Aww. See it's That's a weird. big stack. That's very strange. It looks Wait like a, a model. It looks like a Lionel engine. It does. You know why? It's cute, though. Why? You know why? It was the Pacific, but they cut the trailing truck off. They took oh. away its manhood. Did they also, like, put a lowering kit on it? Oh. I have no it's idea. Just... <laughs> it's Look just... at it. Yeah, that's that looks normal. Does, huh. The thing okay. that sticks out to me is the fact that they've got the uh, a clockwork smoke box front, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. What? And then also the uh, the um, steak tamper sticking out of the smokestack. <laughs> that looks like that looks like one of those things with the handles on each side that you use to like smack down on fence posts to put them in. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's, that's an interesting spark arrestor. It's certainly not part of the engine. It's certainly yeah. not a very good spark arrestor if it is one. <laughs> but, but yeah, again, they're in the very early planning stages in SRAF mm -hmm. doing, so uh, I don't know too much they, about them. Are you sure it was in Mexico? Try to get like a port yeah, it's from Mexico. I feel like or, be a sorry, where, where is it now? Where is it now? Uh, it's in Oregon. Oh, okay. I was I thinking it was still in Mexico. I was thinking it was still in Mexico, and I was it, looking at the signs Kaiser, like Oregon. they have Target and Lowe's and a place <laughs> called, you know, written in English station in Mexico. Yeah, it's uh, it's okay. about ten, it's about five miles south of where the museum is. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> that's Hopefully, a, it's that's not a in horrible shape. That. It doesn't have a jacket on it, which is a little bit suspect. But I, I know it doesn't have a jacket on it because of. Yeah, Vitamin cookies. cookies. My only problem is where are they going to keep it? <laughs> yeah, do they not have like a wood shed? No. Know. Well, yeah. speaking of cute engines. Yeah. The main narrow gauge is already giving or is already selling tickets for its tenth annual annual Polar Express because hey. Christmas just can't come early enough. Oh God! Oh, okay. We've already <laughs> sold out. You were. Oh my it's not God. even October. We've sold, yet. Last I checked, last I checked, and this was like two weeks ago when I last checked, we had sold about three quarters of the tickets. Oh my God! Good it's lord! Even, it's not even October yet. 
it's late September and we're is already it really out of that worth it though? I guess. You should just start selling immediately when the last one ends and see how long it takes to sell out. Yeah, I guess. I, oh, yeah, I know at least like all of train? December is sold out. There are some tickets left, but they're like early November. Oh my they're gosh. like the first trips. All of December is already oh, sold out. It has been since like a week or... after they announced the event. Uh, well, I mean, the Black River is trying to stay in season. They have a pumpkin train, a trick-or-treat express, which is... The picture for that is a friggin' dude in, like, the inflatable dinosaur costume climbing on a Pennsylvania Railroad caboose. Jeez. Uh, is it Mr. Bonner? I don't... I don't know. Is that the conductor from Dinosaur Train? No, Mr. Bonner's the dude that's, like... Oh. Not a... He's a pedophile, but not a pedophile that dresses in a giant skeleton suit. Ah, I don't know oh. this one. Oh, so you can see his bow. Uh, yeah, he dresses, ah. he dresses in black span, like a black spandex morph suit with a slot cut for his eyes. Oh, oh okay, I didn't know where and you were the, going with that for a second. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> with a slot cut. I'm just going to leave it there. Dick Cal for Harambe. Hang on, hang on, let me, I need to find <laughs> a picture. Do you appreciate the idea of Harambe more than Harambe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the three sides. <laughs> do you pull the lever to avoid a trolley problem? <laughs> <laughs> I need to I need to link the trolley problem that jump. Needs, that needs to be your termination. <laughs> okay, oh, hang on. that'll here's, that'll be it. Here's Mr. Boner. Oh, Let me see God. if I can find a picture that has his face. We're looking up a thing called Mr. Boner <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Hobo here's Hobo Donald too. That's kind of funny. <laughs> 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 Okay. Abort, here's abort. Mr. Okay. Here's Hold Mr. on. Well, no, his name is Mr. Bones. Right. Uh -huh. This is official name. Uh-huh. Look, uh -huh. hang, on, hang on. Here's Mr. Mr. Boner. Mr. Bones. <laughs> Listen, Mr. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, wait. Take... <laughs> wait. <in> the... <laughs> Fuck. Fake. That's, that's about 10,000 times better than I expected. Yeah, yeah, it's actually kind of cool to see him walking around. It's just horrible That's when really you know cool. the backstory that he was a substitute teacher that got fired for um, ooh, doing things. Advances. For showing his bones. <laughs> oh, Taking an anatomy class. Anyways, anyway. I'm going to drag us over into Scranton for a second. <laughs> I don't want to so, go. No more Mr. Boner. A couple weeks is Columbus Day. A couple weeks from now is Columbus Day, and they're doing a Columbus Day steam excursion with Anne, with number 26, nice. uh, on Monday, October 9th. So <laughs> it's going to operate through the Lackawanna Valley on the DNH main line, uh, departing Steamtown at 10 a.m. and arriving back at 4 p.m. So that's uh, quite an excursion for a little 060. <laughs> So, and uh, as well, they're going to be. There's another blurb in here about, of course, they're running their their uh, Scranton limited trains and the Neog uh, limited trains through November 12th. So, there you go. There's any real info about Steamtown you needed, but they're doing another excursion. That is their fall foliage excursion for 2017. Foliage. Which is to... Where does it run to? Oh, it runs to <laughs> Moscow, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Moscow, Moscow. Uh, so that is on October 14th and 21st. So if you get up there any... Uh, basically, three out of four Saturdays in October. How many Saturdays are in October right now? Yeah, three out of four Saturdays in October. They're going to be running something. Actually, no. One Monday in two of the Saturdays. Three out of four weekends. There we go. They're going to be running something special. And as well, they're working on something special. As we know, uh, 3713 is progressing, albeit slowly. But the tender is no now being study. prepped. The tender is now being prepped for overhaul. So Nice. It was moved off display this week and placed in the Steamtown shop where restoration work will begin. And so the tank is going to be removed and it's going to be sent to... Uh, the, the tank is going to be taken out and sent to the contractor who's building the new tender, and... Wait a minute, I thought, they had a, I thought the tender was done. No, they have a tender, but the tender is not usable. Oh. Uh, Got it. The, the old, it's 3713's old tender, but they're going to be 
taking the tank out, sending it to the person who's working on the new tender, and that'll be so that they can compare measurements from the drawings, and then they're going to be able to check to see if the frame needs repairs, uh, and also pull out the stoker, the trucks, the brake system, and see what can be salvaged, what needs to be got, you know, thrown out. Uh, and they're also going to be replacing the bearings with roller bearings. So, which are actually already purchased, already on site. Nice. So, there you go. Tender decking. Uh, big, oh. strides with, big strides with tenders lately, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, big strides with coffee, too, out in the Northeast. Coffee. So, coffee. Wild found Dunkin' Donuts number 94. Right, right. Yeah, but here, we need to just keep a running tally here on. Oh, is this uh, like how many Dunkin' Donuts you've been to, Weibold? No, no this is how many seen. we've found. It's uh, how many we he don't... saw from when he arrived, from when he departed uh, Denver. Yeah, I believe because you counted yeah, one because I counted layover. Yeah, I counted the two in the DC. Air, no, it was three oh. in the DC airport. Okay. Uh, uh, but here we go on Northeast Regional Trains. Amtrak welcomes Dunkin' Donuts hot coffee <laughs> uh, service. Aye. So, and how good is it, Ellis? Original blend and decaf hot coffee on board all of our northeast regional trains. <laughs> how what good is it? Donuts, man. It's wicked donuts. good. Good uh, coffee. Available to the nearly 12 million customers who ride northeast regional and Acela services each year. Nice. <laughs> so. They have basically retrofitted cafe cars to brew Duncan. Yes. They know right. their target audience. That's for That's sure. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but there's got to be a name for this that we can come up with. A name for what? I don't know. Duncan on a train. Oh God. I'm getting Am- dunked on a train. A good, Amtrak, a good... ru- Amtrak runs on Duncan. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Time. Speaking of Amtrak, Wait. actually, good news for what? Amtrak. Uh, other than the fact that Amtrak's budget did not get slashed in the most recent round of proposals, uh, which was something that... There was an article on it, I was like, okay, this means nothing happened. Uh, yeah. Oh, I can't actually look at the... God damn it. It, it so, means nothing happened, but good news nonetheless. Yeah, very, very good news nonetheless. However... Here is the really good news, and this is actually really important good news, especially if you care about uh, the Northeast Corridor. And, I mean, as a, as a fan of Amtrak and someone who uses the Northeast Corridor, I care about it an awful lot. But, as many may know, the tunnels that Amtrak currently uses to reach Penn Station under the Hudson River from the west, so from New Jersey to New York City, uh, are well over 100 years old. They were yep. built by the Pennsylvania Railroad initially around the turn of the century. And yep. these tunnels were for the first time ever inundated with water during Hurricane Sandy. And even then, they already needed repairs because they were 100 years old. So, so the logical thing is let's immediately close them for maintenance. Except... Yes, yes. <laughs> except they are the backbone of Amtrak's most important and most lucrative section. So you can't just you can't shut down both of the tunnels to repair them. You can't shut down one of the tunnels because then you're limiting Amtrak to a one-track main line on its busiest portion. And you and can't so, do nothing because then you're in the business of ferrying people via submarine. Exactly. And so for a long time, the project to build new Hudson River tunnels has been talked about and talked about, and funded and not funded, and planned and not planned, and apparently construction is going to start in the spring Whoa. so this is this is the furthest that we've gone it is uh so this is uh tony Cassia, i think i don't know who that is precisely Cassia. but yeah. i can't read the article um thanks cranes but, yeah uh but the project will move forward even yep. though it will be expensive and we don't have a uh guaranteed line of funding for it yet but we okay. know it's but we know it's necessary. It's it's basically the we don't have money for this, but we but need to we do need it to anyways. Do yeah. yeah. Well, 
In the meanwhile, for those of you commuters riding Amtrak through the tunnels into New York City, have fun. Bring scuba gear. <laughs> Bring your floaties. Oh, that wouldn't help with the tunnel. Yeah. No, not really. It'd get I don't know. It'd be easier. Ceiling. It'd be easier to find your cold, lifeless dead corpse. Pinned against the ceiling. Yeah. Right. Anyway, right. I mean, when when the tunnel ultimately drains, it's a huge heap of scrap iron and bodies. At least you're on the top. Speaking Jesus of Christ. heaps of scrap iron, uh, <laughs> the crude cars derailed on Montana Whale Yank. Oh, God. Yeah, like, how many of them? Like, 30 of them? Um, Jeez. doesn't think it was quite 30. Okay, I may be thinking of a different derailment, but... It, it oh, was yeah, sorry, few... sorry, different, yeah, oh, it wait. was a different derailment. It was literally a different derailment in the yeah. same spot. Sure. Awesome. Yeah, I was going to say in the picture, it looks like there's these four cars off. When you win. Ow, what the hell? Disney. Ow, what the hell? Just... I just got an ad for Disney. <laughs> On that page. <laughs> uh. Okay, continue, sorry. Anyway, so there's these four tankers that went off. Oh my Full God. of crude oil. Yeah. In the yard. Yeah. Good job. Yep. At least it was slow. How do they derail? Like, just go, like, do they pick a switch or something? No, they... And then they went through some bad track. Oh, uh, goddamn it. Because the, the same thing happened a few years ago with the whale in, in the same spot. Hmm. I don't think Montana whale did anything to fix it. <laughs> hey, you know, hold on a second. Wasn't Cranes the, guy, the guys that we were just looking at for this article that we couldn't read? Yeah, Cranes, New York. So we have another article from Cranes. It's out of Detroit. <laughs> I can read it. Okay. I guess they know their target audiences. <laughs> Anyways. Let's, yeah. uh, to take another Amtrak detour. Okay. The depot, which is huge in Detroit, for the record. It is a gigantic depot. It looks like it ought to be a hotel or something. Um, there's a guy by the name of Matthew Maroon. And I, I'm saying it specifically like that so I don't say Matthew Moron. Uh, he has... I, I believe... I, I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. A son of billionaire transportation mogul Manuel Matty Maroon uh. seems serious about making the depot a mass transit hub again. So he's trying to save this... Well, not save necessarily because I don't think it's going anywhere. We purpose the depot. He's to trying to repurpose function. the depot. As a depot. Yeah. So, uh, Amtrak service ceased to this depot in 1988. And so that means it's been eh, almost 30 years now yeah. since that happened. And he's pushing for uh, reconnecting Amtrak service to it and using it as a straight shot rail line, quote, to Detroit Metropolitan Airport and a stop for Amtrak's high-speed train routes to Chicago nice. and a connection to Ontario's Via Rail through the adjacent rail tunnel. So Ooh. that's something that could be extremely useful. And, I mean, Detroit is not in a bad place geographically. It's in a bad no, place Detroit financially. No, Detroit is a bad place. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in a bad place financially. And uh, more commerce can always help, although the... the Oh, it looks like it used to be decadent, but it's rough right now. Uh, the cost of renovating the entire train station north of a hundred million dollars. Mm. Be quiet, that is, horseman. That is painful. We can afford to make a case to develop the tower with one big caveat. If the train station portion of the building doesn't wreck it. The first floor is that elephant in the living room. You just can't you can't just ignore it. There's a hundred and ten thousand square foot concourse of marble walls. Uh, like, this is a... It's a shiny station. It's a nice station. Or it was, at least, I should say. Yeah. It's a huge uh, station. Greatest. This is, this is actually a pretty significant... Uh, it's a pretty significant article here. and talks a lot about it. I would love to see this station come back to life almost as much as I'd love to see the uh, Buffalo Terminal come back to life. Yeah... I don't know, it looks, it looks cool on the inside, and the stonework, especially like above the doorways, is really nice, but Buffalo still wins in my head by a lot, yeah. just because it's so iconic. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't it's, even know Detroit had such a large station. Although yeah, I didn't. I, I guess it makes sense. Yeah, finding out about but, it, I'm not surprised at all. But Yeah, but Buffalo Union Station is just too famous. It's like, oh, please. Yeah. Either way, both of those stations have huge office space, basically. Yeah. yeah. Huge potential for office space to rent all that area out. You, you don't make money yep. off the train. Or, you make money well, I mean, off the or if you put space. it back in service as a train station, a hotel. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, what, it, it, what it was meant to be. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, anyways. Not even what it was meant to be, what it was. Who else has got some interesting news? Uh, uh, I have some good news. Else? Oh, yeah. Both of them involving uh, CNO Canales. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay, so I'll start with uh, CNO 2700. For years, it's been kind of neglected at the uh, Denison Depot Museum in Denison, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And just recently, like within the last, I think, two weeks, um, I think it was a grant. I want to say it was a grant. Grant, wait. Uh, yeah, the Denison Depot Museum got money to uh, cosmetically restore 2700, and oh. work has oh. began. Work has begun. Um, can't find the picture of it, but what? Or I saw a picture. They had the tender completely sandblasted, and I think they were doing some welding up by the uh, smoke box or something. Hmm. So yay! Woo! Yay! Nice. Doing things. And uh, CNO 2716, they're they're doing stuff. Uh, just recently, they got the Dynamo working on just regular air pressure. Nice. Okay. And they tested the uh, Stoker motor on air pressure as well. Seems Stoker. Mm hmm. Auto Stoker. So uh, yeah, keep going with keep making progress. Uh, Yeah. So uh, I can this are those two. Okay, what else have we got? I don't have too much left, so I'm, I'm okay, kind of handing uh, off. You guys have stuff. The Northwest Railroad Museum acquired a new porter locomotive. Is it cute? Yeah, it's a cute old thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a porter, a how is it not? Park. Oh, it, it it's in, kind of... Yeah. Like it was in a city park for <laughs> quite a while. Yeah, you could say that again. Which, I, I'm sorry to know it's a trend Sad in that cities city are starting to so, like, not the want their park engines. Um, I mean, they should use it to run around the park. Ew, sunbeam. <laughs> sunbeam. Yeah, they they ate temporary track and moved it. Yeah. Oh. Oh, it's been there for 57 years? Wow. Yeah. Jesus. It's cute. It's so cute. What are they though. doing with it? I have no idea. Just putting it on the spray. <laughs> are they going to at least give it a fresh coat of paint? Like, look at it. It's oh, green. Yeah. Uh, Practically. Not, like, not, not the easy. proper kind of green. Being green. Oh, you, no proper kind of green. Oh, it's just to see the rest of them. You see them. They have about... I want to say... 15 steam engines outside. Oh, so they're like this? steam town. But, Wait. So they're like a junkyard? I, I, I'm yeah, trying... What museum is this? <sighs> we specialize in used sobs. I mean, the, the new management isn't that bad. But we specialize in used <laughs> sobs. <laughs> in pre-owned sobs. Remember we passed a place that said that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, you could just say you're a junk dealer. Yeah. I don't know. They might be working on you. I don't know. I'd like to see them do something. And it's also in the same place where there's a whole bunch of trolleys out in the middle of the forest. They're owned by one of their co-founders. Forest trolley. Uh, I'm not going to name her. Take your reasons. Well, what else? What else is going on? Come on, just bounce from one to the next. You guys okay. have the floor. I've got nothing. Spooky trolley. I've, What's a spooky yeah. trolley? Okay, so the Ohio Railway Museum's annual ghost trolley event. Oh, they have a. Okay, 
You yeah, know what I'm really the uh, dates for that have been announced. They're running it on the October 21st, 22nd, 28th, and the 29th. Uh, this Halloween event is designed for younger kids to have fun and not be frightened. Okay. Okay. Then, wow. I, so it's pretty much ghost stories on a uh, ghost stories on a trolley. That's not spooky at all. If they're not to be frightened. I mean, it's so not spooky for like a, I mean, it's spooky for like a six year old. Uh-huh. You, I mean, you know I, what's I, even I, more I, spooky than that? Hmm. The huge freaking drone flying skills. They're, they're oh my spooky. god! Oh, that's wait, awesome. Did you see that? Yeah, they're where great. he's like flying in the boxcar and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here's yeah, this video. Insane. Here's this video. Milky, you can talk about it all you like, but I am. Ex- I love this video, even if it's oh, legal. Yeah, it's great. I need to send this to uh, he, he did the guy all sorts of stunts in the video. It was great. <laughs> Just be like, hey, do this. One up this guy. It, it was well, badass. Do it, maybe, but <laughs> one up him. Yeah, because apparently. Drink magazine called to UP and the FIA about it. Well, uh, yeah. You know, UP, presumably UP, the FRA, and they talked about, uh, oh. they called the FAA as well. Narcs. But, Narcs. But, but, why did they bring the FAA in on it? Because he's flying a drone around in, you know, restricted he's property. And they were like, hey, what's the, what's the regulations on this? And, oh. quote, all pilots shall avoid flying directly over unprotected people, vessels, vehicles, or structures, and shall avoid endangerment oh, of life protected. and property of others. A yes. train would qualify as a vehicle, the representative says. I suppose but so. Just to it's clear protected. that up. It's on track. Just to clear that up. It is not a building. <laughs> Due it to is, its four wheels. <laughs> it is most definitely. Also, I have a question. I have a question. What? This is yes. an unrelated, it's only a semi-related question to the video. At 20 like, seconds well, semi's in... vehicle, too. At, at 20 seconds in the video, they f- he flies over something that looks like another set of tracks that's, like, up in the hill. What the hell is that? Uh... Maybe it's the old alignment of the wayward through there? I mean... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. It looks like it's part of a roller coaster or something. Wait, wait, wait. How far? Like, 20 seconds in the video. <laughs> It looks like a white on where that got washed out. <laughs> yeah, that's another. Wait a minute. <laughs> what, what the hell? What was Cat. that? What? I don't know what it is. But yeah, so this huh. thing is awesome. Uh, yeah. Okay. Don't do it. If, don't do if you're it, at like, home, don't try this at home. But this is awesome. <laughs> We encourage you to watch the video, not the hell is that? Yes, that is that is exactly correct. We encourage you to watch the video. Also, at one of the one of my favorite parts in it is at about a minute in, he the engineer flies, the window. Yeah, he flies right up next to the cab and just sits there, and the engineer looks. Seems like and then he shuts the window immediately. <laughs> but this is how train masters are going to spy on you <laughs> in the future. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, fl- is that a flask in your pocket? Yeah, is that a flask in your pocket? God damn it, somebody give me a drink. <laughs> I need a cold one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and UP's, it's against UP's policy as well. And uh, apparently the FRA doesn't have any. Uh, well, the FRA did not. Re- uh, respond Pretty to quiet. their call, yeah. but I doubt they have anything on track. I, I doubt, yeah, I doubt they have. Did they ever catch who did it? I don't know. It it gives it like it's posted on the internet, right? They have to know yeah. who posted it. You know, this, yeah, but like, can they link that to an account? I don't know. I mean, they probably or to, can. Can they link an account to, say, to like, a person? Couldn't you, like, they trace probably, it? They probably can. I don't know if they have or they haven't. Someone would have to, like, go yeah. after it. Well, the, that, that would be my question is, you know, of course they can. Have they? Yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. Although, I feel like there would be something in the article about, you know, Fomer is arrested for... Yeah, that's true. All right. So, well, I've I've unfortunately got to run to uh, dinner real quick. Oh, okay. Um, well, we're so, we're gonna head into the bonus round, the lightning round soon. You're all okay. set with your news, right? Yeah, I'm I'm all done. The only other thing is the flying Scotsman thing, and that's really not all that amazing. Yeah, flying Scotsman got stuck on a hill, and they had to bring out another steam engine to help it. Yeah, uh, so every British. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had to bring out three O six O's. Just kidding. 
Uh, <laughs> only as if we now uh, unit at 51. Uh, um, one but bigger but termination. Bigger. Termination. Go see Kingsman 2. Now. Do it. Okay. okay. See you guys. Okay. Uh, Bye. Bye. Anyways, well, that, that's the that is possibly my favorite thing in this in this terminus so far is that video. Yeah. Well, yeah. speaking of uh, people doing crazy things. Oh boy. Our friends oh down my under God. in Australia. <laughs> a uh, a twenty three a twenty three year old man was apparently riding on the back of a train, hanging onto the windshield wiper, as it's going at one hundred ten kilometers per hour. Which is like 65. Which is pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like a 14 second video or something. Yeah. There's not even any substance to this article. Oh. It's just the dude clinging onto the back of the train. Jeez. How to hitch a ride. That's insane. I know. How do you manage that? I don't How know. How do you manage that without like... I wonder if the guy in the car was the first person to notice him or... Maybe. I don't or maybe know. the first one, like, to notice and, like, take a video of it. Yeah. But, like, when he was leaving the station, there must have been people on the platform, right? right? I don't know. <laughs> Do they, they don't have station agents? Somebody comes out yelling at you, like, get off the back of the train. <laughs> I don't know. Oi, get off the back of the train. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. So no. we we have an update to our to a news story that we shared quite a while ago. Oh boy. About that NF Silkmo box and. Uh huh. And we have a list of where everything went. Oh okay. Oh okay. Unfortunately, the Oregon Southern Railroad is not on here. Uh. It, it it's on their book, surely, but not not on the list. Where is <laughs> there is there a where is the list of where the things, the following locomotives sold, with okay. buyer information. Yep. Okay. See, okay. I all been with buyer information? Like Gary. Nice. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Yeah. Indiana Boxcar Corporation. Okay. Indy rail services. Progress Rail. Okay. Somebody's hey, getting a rebuild. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'll be uh, going to rebuilding. Uh, yeah. I'm running in Northern got three, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's Northern one. Northern Nick Airy got a few. Tennessee Valley got one. Of course. Wait a minute, they did? Yeah. I swear to God. Tourist Railroad's got a few of them. Wow. They have, like, one of everything. <laughs> I like a GATX bought a couple. I want to go to TVRM because they have so much shit. <laughs> and most of it runs too. Metro but, East. But interesting to see where they all went. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that. it's not like I'm glad it's not like scrap, 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 scrap. Yeah, you know, scrapper most bought of, this, scrapper bought most that. Most of them are rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. <laughs> yeah, and also, there's no G and W in there either, which is. Yeah. Yay! No orange plague. No orange plague. No orange. Plague. But they're doing so many good things, like no, uh, they're not multiplying their holdings news. by a hundredfold since 1977 by appointing carefully crafted acquisition strategies. Okay. <laughs> How much are they paying you? Shameless plug for GW. They... Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not to buy a wow dollars a word. Uh, Twenty dollars a word. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, uh, the, the picture that they got for this is beautiful. It's a guy standing in front of a P&W who cheaply freed that. And this was one of their managers that they did, uh, they did the 40 for 49 Steam special for on the P&W. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because he retired. But, uh, anyways, the article goes on to describe just, just the great amount of uh, money that they made mm -hmm. off of acquiring these small, <laughs> pretty decent werewolves. Yep. And fixing them up <coughs> and making them profitable again. When, uh, past ones think they aren't profitable anymore. 
Speaking of class ones, actually, one one moment to detour okay. some cool stuff. So, uh, Norfolk Southern. For okay, first of all, for a minute, I thought I I misread the beginning of this, or I read it and misunderstood it, and got very kind of like confused, excited. Uh, NS goes with Guardians for end of train. I did not know what Guardians was. I assume they meant... Are they of the galaxy? <laughs> no, I, I assume they had something to do with a person at the end of the train and went, Huh? Caboose? But no, uh, <laughs> a Guardian is uh, a specific a brand of end-of-train devices made by Progress Rail, which Progress Rail is owned by Caterpillar. I did yeah. not know that. Uh, and, uh, and then Caterpillar also owns CMD. <laughs> <laughs> but they are using these Guardian end-of-train devices. Now, the cool thing, the thing that struck out with me, I don't know how common this is. I assume it's more common than I know because I don't pay attention to end-of-train devices, but uh, they use air pressure from the brakes to power them. It runs through a little turbine and powers the end-of-train device when the brakes are, are powered up. Uh, Pretty nice. And... It has backup batteries for when, you know, you're not putting any air pressure in the system. And right. apparently it's much lighter than normal because it's not using batteries, like, you know, oh. for all of its power. So that is really, really cool. And they're also going to be assembled at Arab, Alabama. In, in Arab, Alabama. Arab, Alabama. Arab, Alabama. <laughs> the Arab, Alabama facility. Arab, Alabama. <laughs> Oh, wow, JJ. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't even going to go. Okay. Shame, shame, shame. That, well, you know where point. I am going to go? Yeah. Where? To the, um, to the East Valley, where they're looking at restoring uh, service. Or, where is I, the East I, I, Valley? Uh, Oregon. <laughs> okay. So the, the Eastern Ram and Valley. Okay. Which is... Uh, it's a railroad line owned by the Lamb and Valley Railroad, a railway, which uses the line from UP. And there's a few shippers on it that haven't had service since January of 2012. <laughs> because of a washout. <laughs> so, what the shippers did is they got together and said, hey, railroad, fix your stuff. <laughs> They they did the exact opposite of what the POTD, POTB did, uh, which was chat, did only squat. Uh, but they got cost estimates of almost thirty thousand dollars to repair the line. That's not terrible for a line. No, it's not terrible compared to the fifty mil to repair the port to Oma Bay. <laughs> And then they build an airport with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. And no one bothers to start up a tourist railroad than the other end to save it from being a rail trail. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, that aside, they, they want to restore rail service. <laughs> Speaking of rail trails and this East oh. East Valley thing, this one thing in here struck me. I was I was reading through it. One thing in here struck me. The last picture in the article. Yeah. Uh, Limit Valley Railway line crossing at Jordan Road. One right. farmer slash landowner expressed concerns with thoughts of converting the, the rail into a bicycle and pedestrian trail, which he said would expose the land to people who are unfamiliar with agriculture issues and realities. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, What's I can understand point? if you're against a rail trail. But, in your backyard, but, yeah. But that's the reason is it would expose people, it would expose the land to people who are unfamiliar with agriculture <laughs> issues and realities. <laughs> what does that mean? It means that people <laughs> no. are against it. Or, like, I don't want it in my backyard. <laughs> but, I don't know. Maybe it means uh, people that, that, I might are, back that do not understand farms in any way, shape, or form will be there. And. What? You don't, I don't know. <laughs> What's the point? They'll learn. I don't know. I mean, well, God forbid they do that. It's going to be more like, 
Uh, the people who are oh. unfamiliar with agriculture issues, it's like, oh, what is that? Oh, so watering, you know, that's a that's a sprinkler. How dare they? That's because they don't understand how agriculture See, works. See, I can't I assume... stand people that say, you know, where does, you know, someone asks them, where's our food come from? And they say, you know. The supermarket. Yeah. Okay, where's it coming from? You know, it just comes from Walmart. Okay, I don't get the, I don't see what's so bad about exposing people to farms. There, there's nothing bad about it. <laughs> well, this person clearly thinks there's something very wrong with it. Okay, but I want to. Okay, who is this? Who is this? I don't know. It was the last thing in the article. Who is this person? Uh, anyway, it's there. He's uh, afraid of people looking at his farm. He's. A, and you don't think people are going to do that on the goddamn train? I mean. Well, yeah. We should be the same people that want to rebuild the. The entirety of the guy. He's afraid all of those rowdy bicyclists are going to come in and steal the corn. I mean, well, I mean, people do that. Well, not, I don't know anybody that does that, but I mean, I could. I'm, not, I'm, not, yeah. right I'm sure it happens somewhere, but you know, you want a couple. If, uh, but if corn, people are going to steal a couple your years corn, of corn for dinner, just go across the road and take yeah. them. If people are going to steal your corn, they're going to do it whether there's a railroad track there or not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a part of a series of ongoing articles about restoring whale service. <laughs> well, I'd like to see it happen. I I would too, especially since I've been thinking about rebuilding from Staten to uh, I I think it's uh, Serburn. It's where it connected with the Albany and Eastern before the SP abandoned that. The the wide ways all there. I think Pybrick's a public, uh, a private road now, but that's not a big deal <laughs> compared to the washout. <laughs> but hmm. good, oh, good stuff whoa. going on. What is this? What, what is, is what? this? Breaking news? Question mark. What? Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been trying to keep tabs on. Speaking of commuter rail, I've been trying to keep tabs on what the Boston Surface Railroad Company is doing. So that, right. those are the guys that are trying to restore service directly from Providence, Rhode Island to Worcester, Massachusetts. And as well, they want to have service from Boston North Station to Lowell, New Hampshire. Uh, not Lowell. Not Lowell, New Hampshire, because that's not a thing. Massachusetts. But to, uh, to, through Lowell, Massachusetts, I believe, and into New Hampshire. Uh, All right. So... Boston Service Railroad Company, Rhode Island, is in the early stages of planning to bring privately funded rail pa passenger rail service from Bedford to Worcester, Mass., with the potential stops in Nashua, in Nashua, Nashua, and Lowell, Mass. Sure, uh, sure. Nice. So, if Nashua provided a station, we'd be happy to stop there. Um, his company is in the process of bringing commuter rail from Worcester, Mass., to Providence, Rhode Island, and he's already secured station rights in Worcester and entered into a long-term lease to own the historic train station in Winsuk, Rhode Island. Nice. Uh, so I didn't know he had the Worcester station. He's already moved in. T they're already moved into the one socket station. Uh, All right. Uh, well, that's good. <laughs> and if all the stars are lined, I'd be ecstatic if we could have a train running in four years. He says. Uh, although BRSC did not plan on pursuing a New Hampshire rail plan for about a decade, Bono said the political climate has called for his company to explore the option now. So he'd like yep. to have that done that in happens. four years. Uh, and yeah, so he's looking to uh, convert part of Crown Street, a Crown Street parcel in Nashua to a train stop. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm more looking to see if there are any changes or updates on what's going on to uh, what's going on with the original plan, with the connection between Providence and Worcester, because that is something that I'd like to see happen. You know, more service right. to the station and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, it's tricky based on the track arrangement, though. I don't know how it would really pan out. They would need to have some serious track upgrades and changes. Partnership between the New Hampshire City and a private railroad company in order to offer commuter service. Uh, yeah, Nashua, New Hampshire, that's... Said the service would come at no cost to the city as it would be a public-private partnership. So the commuter line would operate on a for-profit basis after it opened. So good luck to them for with that. 
Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful and not exactly expectant that they're going to be able to turn a profit, but apparently yeah. they think the numbers work. So, more power to yeah. them. I'd like to see it happen. Uh, okay. but yeah, that's that's the updates on that. I just wanted to I wanted to check for myself, and there just happened to be two new articles about them oh, right. for this nice. New Hampshire service. Nice. So, anyways, anything else we've got? The the Peninsula Railway Group has a working speeder now in the Tamper. <laughs> oh, congratulations! They and they're off. working at getting uh, train wipes started as soon as next spring on their railroad, which goes from the town of Shelton. To, uh, to I think a tri sort mill or the side of one. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's one of the last uh, true logging railroads in North America. <laughs> and they were hauling tri number out there until 2015. Okay. But then a whole bunch of people got together and said, hey, we want to save the railroad. And now they're saving the railroad. <laughs> Okay, well, there you go. Yep. And... So, you want to be a train engineer? Oh, boy. I know, I know we all do at some point. <laughs> and <laughs> some of us are, but... Uh, it, <laughs> oh, yeah, Wybo's not here to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. But if you aren't, and want to try the K-36, <laughs> go, go, go do the CAPS program. Wait a minute, do you get to drive Thunder Chicken? No, no. K- you get to drive K-36. Aww. Yeah. But it's a very oh, nice uh, radio piece about the program. I I listened to it but the day it came out. and I, I, As much as I don't like coal-fired engines, I do it. <laughs> For the fun of it, <laughs> more than anything. I mean, how often do you get to drive a steam engine? Yeah. Give me steam. Yeah, and yes, the Sibia Corvallis is going to give up their number five. Well, it's like once a week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say <laughs> once a week. I don't know, I do this all the time. Look at me, I'm like, Yeah. I'm tall. He bangs his head on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, because I do the same thing on trolls. <laughs> My, my cap has saved me a number of times from head injuries. <laughs> but anyways, that's I all the news that I have. Okay. All right. Well, Jade or anything else? Uh, no. I'm I'm done. Oh. All right. We're all set then. Wait a minute. I have one more thing. What do you want? <laughs> Sumter Valley is closed for the season. That's it. Oh, rip in peace in Sumter Valley. We yeah. won't miss you. They come back next year. Don't worry. Yeah. All right. All right, so okay. then, of course, we'll move on to the terminations. Unless we want to discuss... discuss. Well, we can't, because Weibel's not here now. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oops, I think I put that in the wrong order. So, Jader, you're going first. Yeah. Totally bogus points. Except for the being racist point. What yeah. did I do? <laughs> the, the Arab, the Arab Alabama, and you go Allahu Akbar. Oh yeah! <laughs> God damn it! Uh, FFA. God it's much damn. more than cows and plows. Mm-hmm. No plowing involved. Uh, anyways, I need to find a thing real quick. Um, let me let me grab this. Gallery. This is why. So um, um, this is the great is, trolley is problem. Is it safe for work? Yes, it's very. Okay, it's not the thing that Dean shared. This is like... the great trolley problem dump. So I advise everyone to check it out. Let's buy some trolleys. <laughs> Perhaps after the after the podcast is over for the for the co-hosts here. I already went through the whole thing with Weibold. Uh, speaking of which, Weibold says go see Kingsman 2 now. I haven't seen yep. the first one yet. Milky, okay. what, is what Kingsman? do you say? Okay, I, I got a video here that was released today of SP-18 running in Yaws, California. 
cool. a while back I mentioned that they restored it in Independence, California, but they moved it to another museum, and they're operating it there with a box car and a combine. <laughs> Rather than the 100 feet of trap that they had in their museum that they restored it at. <laughs> but cool. Very, very good to see it running. Especially since how this track is where it ran originally. <laughs> Isn't this the one where they were going to move it and then it was like, okay, we're going to send it to this place and it's however much they have built by the time it gets there? Or was that yep. a different engine? No, that yep. was that engine? Okay, awesome. Okay, so anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed this installation of the Terminus podcast. Maybe next maybe next week, or maybe in two weeks, we'll have a fifth person, as usual. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.